Well, hello, true believers. Welcome once again to 3D6 Down the Line. We are at uh, the seminal episode 20 of our Dolmenwood campaign using the old school essential system. Once again, I am your referee, John, and going around the horn, we have Mike. Hi there. I play Alf, the wizard that can't learn second level spells. <laughs> and David? <laughs> I play uh, Brother Gwilym, the friar who takes the place of the wizard in all things. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Matt? Thank God, somebody has to. <laughs> and Matt? Uh, I, I play uh, Halifax the Knight. I uh, uh, poke things with a sword. <laughs> and lastly, Ted. I play Argus Trigger, the fighter who can't take a hit. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And that is our, our, our troop of ne'er do wells. So uh, last time we uh, enjoined them, uh, you were in to you were deep in the incandescent grottos. Um, you were in a. Uh, a chamber that had um, metallic gray crystals hanging from that were actually keening with a strange uh, piercing whine before you entered. But then when you did, they actually changed and started to emit a, a rasping voice that's, that told you to bow, mortal, before the faceless lord. Before you noticed the room's inhabitants, which were a bunch of gray-skinned, rather small fey creatures um, that had tap-like noses that emitted uh, various uh, delicious beverages from from them, um, and they were all collecting the perplescent moss, the purple violet glowing moss that seemed to be coating the walls of this um, of this chamber as well. Um, they appeared to be relatively friendly, a little bit standoffish, um, but they uh, informed you that they were collecting the moss in order to trade it with the moss dwarves in Orb Swallow, uh, who use it to brew uh, some sort of delicious beverage. So. Um, you were talking with them, chatting with them, when you noticed on the eastern side of this corridor, of this chamber, that there was a fallen door that was uh, down upon the ground, which was obviously once fit into the jam um, in the eastern side that is um, framed by a heavy, uh, framed by a, an exquisitely designed arch that is carved with people writhing in agony, some naked with dissolving flesh and some others that are actually skeletal in form. Um, so sort of a profane... Uh, arch um, of note besides just the artwork and the door itself is the fact that this is man-made um, one of the very first indications of something man-made other than the stairs that brought you down to the grottoes in the first place <clears throat> um, so prior to that just prior to, the, to entering that room you had heard to the north um, a couple of chambers up you had heard a aristocratic voice um, discussing terms with what appeared to be some other men and some goblins of some of sorts, although you didn't see them. But he was negotiating terms as far as guarding a stairway downwards and allowing him to continue his search for something, um, but you couldn't quite make out the details before you decided to go south so that you would avoid contacting them. So that's sort of where we're at, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Um, this chamber that you're in is a, roughly about 20 by 20. I think your map shouldn't reflect that, right? Uh, yep. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much, pretty so much. You, um, you have the passageway that leads back north to the large chamber that has like the scarlet pimperel walls, right? And then you have the eastern oh, passageway, Pimpernel. which you have not you have not actually gone down, which is the man made archway with the profane uh, sculptures on it. Oh, yeah. so just to clarify, and this and the, the the scarlet room not only has a northern exit, it also has an eastern exit, right? That's correct. Which you have not gone yeah. on either. You entered from the southwest. Right. Right. Which leads back to okay. the entrance chamber in the pool. Now, um, uh, what was I going to say? So this, uh, just for date and reference, this is the 14th of Simswald. It's approximately a, a, almost 1030 in the morning right now. Um, the breathing moss that Gwillem had consumed um, and uh, and Elfric is gone. So th th that effect is worn off. But I believe Gwillem has a light spell cast on a stone or a staff. Right. All my stuff. Yeah. yeah, and that has one, two, has four more turns left before that goes out. All right. Uh, I have a quick. Go ahead. I did. No, go, go. I, I was just going to ask um, the. Uh, since you brought up light, uh, is there any other light in this chamber, or is everything coming from his staff? Uh, there is a little bit of other light, actually. Um, many of the uh, these creatures, by the way, are called scrabies. Um, a few of them actually are holding um, long. Uh, uh, 
long cylindrical lanterns that give off sort of a dull kind of reluctant glow. Um, and they've staged a couple of them on the ground as well. They're all very close to the wall um, so that they can kind of highlight their work with the perplescent moss. But it is not enough to actually form like a, a collective pool of light <clears> that illuminates the chamber. They're like little, little pockets of light, basically. They kind of only go gotcha. like five feet. You know? um, the archway with the uh, writhing figures, mm -hmm. skin uh, melting off of them, mm -hmm. etc. Is there any indication, you know, uh, remembering this sort of uh, sulfuric hell that uh, I was in not long ago. <laughs> <laughs> Do I see any indication of environment or any sort of like causal element to this pain that they're in on these archways that might indicate to me this could be leading there? Does that make sense? Um, Is that too specific a question? <laughs> Tell me where this goes. No. <laughs> like the, like the, yeah. source, the source of their agony sort of thing? Do, like, I, do I see any sort of like uh, uh, reliefs of uh, an environment, right? Or sulfuric pool, you know what I mean? Or no, acidic liquids, anything like that. You, you do <laughs> see, you do see uh, what you could be interpreted as an artistic inter uh, representation of that. Um, in that their mm. their forms are all sort of like wrapped around, so that they sort of form like this long, you know, this archway that mm. all the way down. Okay. Right? Okay. Like their, their forms yeah. are entwined, right? Right. But um, they you do see that it's expertly depicted that some of them have their flesh dissolving, right? Yeah. And it appears, although you, it depends on how you interpret it. It could actually be like flesh sure. dissolving, or it could be like goo and slime on their bodies, sort of thing. Mm. Or maybe it's the same thing, you know. Uh, all, good. all right. All well, good. I mean, I'll I'll just remark. Uh, yeah. There's no way of knowing gents, but uh, quite a hellish place earlier, and I wonder if that doesn't lead that way. In well, fact, certain. do we see a stairway at all no down that direction? No stairway, but you have yet to shine your light down that corridor. Can yeah. I do so? Can yeah. I yeah. Prod my staff uh, through the archway. Sure. Uh, so you see that there is a five foot long passageway that goes directly east beyond the length of your light, which is 15 feet. It's only 15 feet, right? 15. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty limited. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but the path is, and it's unlike like the white or the dry or wet sand that you've mostly been stepping on. This is actually dark stone blocks. All right. Man-made once again. Um, there are, uh, there's wet debris, which is scattered along the ground. Um, there are small piles of sand on that ground, which looks like have been scattered from the chamber that you're in now. Um, and some broken ceiling stones, which have actually dropped as well. Um, within 15 feet, you can see that 10 feet down the corridor to your left, there is a door that has a tarnished brass plaque on it that you can't read. And then 15 feet down on the right, there is a, another door where um, there does not appear to be a plaque at all. Okay. The doors themselves appear to be made out of solid stone. And then it goes off into the darkness beyond the reach of your light. I'm going to say, yes, it looks man-made. Relay what I saw. Um, I, I, uh, gentlemen, uh, I don't know what, whether we uh, resolved on a decision on this or not, but uh, are we worried that we might have... Uh, the voice from the other room come knocking fairly soon. Should we uh, uh, leave or go talk to them or any thoughts? I can't remember where we were at. Yeah, uh, I, I think uh, we're down in these grottos. Really, I mean, we're looking for that wizard guy, right? But why are we looking for him? To get paid. Um, I don't care if I get paid from bringing back a rogue wizard or if I get paid because I found a big old chunk of gold hiding out somewhere. Probably get that. Cool. I certainly don't want to fight a room full of goblins right now. Um, so, so that I say we go down the corridor. That leads Scraby cool. like sees you looking down there, Gwilym, and he's like, he's like that. Uh, I don't like the look of that one. We haven't dared to go down there. Probably, probably no good moss or fun guy down there, anyways. Bad, bad feeling about that place. Uh, mm. Such a okay. such a bad place that we lost. Halifax. He was banished. Yeah, he's, he's afraid. <laughs> to, to another realm. Ah, what happened? 
Okay. Uh, cool. Well, well that's a fair that point. point. If the scrabies aren't going down there, maybe we don't want to go down there. But go well, ahead. Well, we're, not, we're not adventurers. We're not well armed like you folk, of course. But right. Speaking of that, though, we we haven't really had a conversation with the scrabies other than to drink their snot. So <laughs> yeah, I want to ask more? them what what what's that? Yeah, what what is down that hallway? Have you, have you seen anybody come or go this way? Wow, we we heard the same thing that the that the crystals said, and they kind of look up above them and sort of shudder in fear. Something about the faceless lord. I don't know. Yeah. I, I think that goes down where we heard this. There's, it's just, well, I think I in character think that's probably in one way or another going to lead to this abyssal, terrible place where based someone was on, trapped. Based on your description of your journey through the river mm -hmm. and how I think it maps out and where we are now, if, if they can, if this connects with where you saw, it's a yeah. long, long path. Oh, I, I, I believe it. Uh, I don't I, think it's going to immediately connect with that. I think there's something much more sinister and close than than the acid pools. Yeah, I think I, I think he's in the room next to us. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah he says, "Well, the, well, the one who's he's, he's he's like we we've only come in here recently within the past day, but sure. we we heard we heard we heard the the man in the other room. We haven't seen him. He hasn't dared come in here. We think he might fear the." Uh, fear the sound coming from here, but uh, oh, we, we heard we heard good. we we heard him setting up, setting up to the north, uh, bringing in all sorts of nefarious men and um, trucking with the with the uh, the fay to the northwest, uh, all the, the cruel and malicious goblins, you know. But uh, it, it, nothing good can come of it. But we fear we fear that m m perhaps it, it, he is he will overcome his fear and actually come down here and that what he is searching for might indeed be beyond those doors for he makes all sorts of all sorts of mentions of of yes. wanting to get back this this object yes. of of his of his ancestors of some sort of book or something i don't know yes yes i uh, gentlemen i again i don't want to uh i agree that our uh Profit can come from any direction. I don't want to go through this door and get trapped between a demon and a goblin horde with a, with a mage who's hired them. So mm -hmm. if we do go down there, we should be very um, quiet and watch our back the whole time. That's All I'm getting at is I don't know if I want patrols behind me and in front of me. That does not mean we have to engage with them, but I think it would behoove us to know a little bit more about this this gentleman's place and intent well you you, you say that uh, uh, how about this idea oh go ahead matt uh you you say that he um uh might be looking for something um he obviously seems to have some coin and looking to hire people on maybe we could get a job with him we're looking for something out we're looking for this wizard he's looking for uh, you mentioned a family book. Maybe we can uh, work out a deal. Halifax, yeah. you're brilliant. He doesn't know why we're looking for him. I love yeah. that we idea. Don't, that we don't, we don't, that's an amazing way. idea. That's a very good idea. Uh, he has no idea what our motivations are. <laughs> In fact, we look like scumbags. I like this, Halifax. You are very wise. And then, if he turns out to be evil, we can smite him as any godly man would. In the back with the dagger. <laughs> with the book that he wanted us to get. Sure, sure, sure. Of course, of course. <laughs> um, I think that's a valid. I think that's a very valid uh, plan as well. But again, not that we have to do that if we don't want to. I, Ted, I'm totally on board with your thinking. I just don't want to get trapped. That's my only nervousness. Well, I mean, situation. I understand that, and tactically, yeah, getting trapped down here would be bad news. But I mean, we're in the lion's mouth now. I mean, like, there's. <laughs> Any direction we go, there's peril. Well, That's technically, the, the door's that way still. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, maybe we should. Uh, <laughs> Do we want to corral? Who else to corral? Does anyone want to just go ahead and corral? Test out those new rules. <laughs> uh, well, we, they, we've no. got nothing to show for this. You know, we haven't brought back treasure from anywhere in sure. many don't forget, episodes. Don't forget what I said about mining crystals, right? Yeah. Um, well, and actually, I, I want on that note. I did have an idea, um, and I wondered because we've we've recognized that we would need to mine the crystals with some tools we don't have. Mm -hmm. I don't know, uh, Grolo, how you'd feel about it, but you know, we could give Pim a sack of coins and and send him back to Prigwart to buy tools and come back. 
whilst we're working. I mean, what it's you know he borrows one of our horses, he could be there and back in a day. Uh, um, Tim, what do you think about that idea? <laughs> He's standing <laughs> right there. I don't really, you know. How, conf- how confident do you feel that you can get uh, back with in safety, Ben? Well, I mean, you know, he, he views it the same way as you do. Is that there is that large chamber with the multiple exits with the that's just to the north, with yeah. the scarlet mushrooms that, um, up, you know, as far as you know, is empty, right? And it leads directly back to the to the entrance. So as yeah, long he's... as as long as he's quiet and doesn't and doesn't um, bring the the northern party on on him, then it shouldn't be an issue. Yeah, I mean, I I don't think we should send our errand boy without us. I don't know. Well, yeah, that's fine. Uh, it just an idea that I was thinking that rather than turning this into this whole sort of like, oh, okay, we all go back to Prigwort. Okay, we all go back to the grotto, and then we mine. Like, well, well to be clear, I don't think we should mine right now at all. If I'm honest, I think mining, well, mine, mine, mining, mining, mining is like, uh, that's what we do after we clear the, the grotto. I'm not going to sit here and mine for for you know three hours and wait for someone to ambush us while we're making a bunch of noise. That sounds like a death trap. Yeah. Mining to me feels like after we've obliterated everything that yeah. lives in the grotto, then we come back and we establish a mining camp. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, I, I I like your thinking. I just don't think this is a safe enough place to make those assumptions and really have some like sort of Halifax pipeline and not be not be robbed. I think Halifax is a good idea. Yeah, let's do this. All right. Okay, so well, I'm gonna, wait, 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 wait. you guys want to actually just go higher on with the aristocratic voice that we know nothing about. In a room full yep. of goblins, we know nothing about. You just want to walk in and be like, "You looking for work?" That—that's what you guys are proposing. No, yeah, yeah, we, uh, yeah. we go up there and we do a little, a little, uh, a little bluffing, and we say, "Hey, we heard you're looking for uh, looking for people to help you out with whatever you got going on down here." Um, what did the voice say, John? The voices the of voice the crystals. The, yeah. Bow mortal before the faceless lord. No, the aristocratic okay. voice. He said, I'm oh, willing no. to pay you to guard while I explore. Yes. Yeah, so no, you know, no, no. I was talking basically. about the crystals. I was, I was talking about the crystals. We go up there and we, we pull a war hammer and we just kind of go, hey, we're, we're here to worship the faceless lord. You know, like, are you hiring? <laughs> Throw a little gang sign and, like, sign on, dude. It'll be great. <laughs> uh, right. While you're discussing, oh, a, a turn goes by. That's also yeah. the 12th turn, which means that you must uh, rest for a turn or suffer minus ones to stuff. Let's rest. Let, let's drink some scravy juice and, and you know, hang out. Uh. <laughs> so I, I want to ask uh, the scrabies, what's, what's up with that uh, uh, vent there with the, with, the, with the bugs in it that leads to the other room? Yeah, one of them kind of goes up and he's like, we were wondering the same thing. He's like, <laughs> sniffs and he like <laughs> blows out some iced tea into the thing and a couple of like insects go scattering. And, Not really sure. Very strange. <laughs> Peephole? Murder hole? Not really. I don't know. <laughs> I think... Uh, we don't own yeah. the place. We just come here for the moss. Yeah. I think it's... Uh, where, where do you guys come from, actually? Oh. oh. I mean... <laughs> Deep and dank you don't places. Mind from, from many realms of fairy, we, 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 we come and we travel. But we, we like the mortal world, though. We like to travel the, the roads of, of mankind and pedal our wares. Have you heard of the Tallow uh, Spire? <laughs> ah, yes, Tallow Spire. We get fantastic prices at Tallow Spire. I always a willing, uh, a, a willing um, clientele at the Tallow Spire. Uh, do you guys like uh, spoken by Phrygia? Phrygia, and they they look at you and like you know their their brow their uh, eyebrowless brows like crinkle a little bit you know and they're like no no one's been to Phrygia. Many, many years, many centuries. Locked only, away. Only the, yeah, only the bravest would go there. You're right. Only the most foolhardy. Yeah. That also works. You're right. Would, You're right. <laughs> only happened upon there by sheer accident. and, yeah. and <laughs> Very early on in their adventure and somehow <laughs> mostly survived. <laughs> well, no one would return should they enter there, of course. Um, so I, well, I need to go uh, tuck in a kid, but when I come back, I'm curious. I, I want to see what's under, like, if there's anything underneath the books. Like, if the bugs are on, if they're just, like, in that thing, or if you can, like, see anything as they kind of, like, 
climb around. Even yeah, maybe like, if necessary, like stick my th sword through the grate and kind of like gently kind of like nudge them around just to see if they're like... I can tell you before you leave, it doesn't appear to be anything like weird or mysterious other than the, the presence of the bugs themselves, you know. Okay. And I should be clear too, it doesn't seem like there's like a barrier that actually like prevents them from leaving. Like sometimes they'll scuttle out and onto the wall and stuff like that, but they, mm -hmm. they, they appear to just sort of like to be crawling all over each other within that the relative safety of that uh, confine. And it's okay. a three yeah. foot deep shaft through the wall. Mm -hmm. And and there's no branching or tubes off of that? No. No. Just That's seriously just picture like the Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom thing. Yeah. It's almost exactly like that. Right. Okay. This I'll, is I'll a, in just a couple minutes. Sure, no problem. Sorry for the confusion. This is not the one earlier that we stuffed with mud. It is, yeah. So the other end. The other end of it though is on the northwestern uh, part of this chamber. Uh, Oh, oh, I, I see. Apologies. Um, okay. Well, you can see this, David, but uh, right there, from that hallway, gotcha. into the room we're in right now, there's this little tube. Yep. Okay. I don't really have a correct scale there, but... No, that's pretty good, though. Um, I, I'm still interested in how the scabies are getting here. Are they, are they, like, walking the ferry roads right into this room, or do you come down the stairs like the rest of us? They came down the stairs like the rest of you. Oh, okay, okay. Yep. yep. All right. So they're just like weird, really they're like go... weird fairy peddlers, sort of is what they're like. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys really want to go join up with this wizard? You don't want to go down the hallway with the you writhing torture wizard. Why do you always make the assumptions that it's going to be an arcane spellcaster leading a group of evil demo <laughs> underground underground complex? <laughs> don't dig it. Uh, it just seems like something a wizard would do. It's just these cultural <laughs> assumptions, then. I just don't Seriously. know why we lead to these conclusions. You need to, Argus, you need to analyze Argus yourself. Is a, Argus is not woke, man. Argus grew up in Drager, <laughs> and wizards were bad news. He's, you know, and they, that, this He's is the known, kind of thing wizards do in all the stories, man. Yeah. That's why you always give you the side eye, Alfred. If I hadn't screwed up that charm person, but I could have changed your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in any case, I don't necessarily think... We, I mean, we don't need to met it. I don't think we need to be best chums with this guy, but I think doing the R&D under a pretext makes sense. And, uh, you, know, you know. Okay, so an extra turn goes idea. by without any um, yeah. without any right, incident. So, so you've only got two more um, turns left on your light spell? So right. you've only got this light... More if we go in with a light spell than if we go in with a, with a torch. I think we go in talking loudly... Oh, wait, wait, wait. What you're saying? We're going to be more impressive with the light spell? We're going to be said? more important if we still have a light spell yeah, active. I agree. If we, do, if we do, like, just wiring around with torches or, like, whatnot. Uh, I thought we okay. were going to tip our hand that, you know, we were magic men if we go with the light spell. You know? Like, we just want to come across as... Of course, I got a, I got a wizard... And a and a cleric, so <laughs> yeah, I think it's fine. Let's just let's just try. Let's walk in that direction. Let's oh, talk. Let's talk loudly about the mining prospects and the wealth that could be had, and how it would be great to expand our retinue and get more money out of all this. And some some version of version other. Yeah, so I told. <laughs> I'm doing it all the way for for, for Matt. And this goes against every instinct you know, I have. That what you're gonna do? You're gonna... Let's leave this scrabies. Yeah, so let's leave the scrabies. So that we don't end up getting them killed while they gather moss, right? Yeah. We'll go back into the room with the red mushrooms, and then you can start your nefarious yeah. plan. Yeah. I'm going to tell Pim. inside the apple. I'm going to tell Pim to, like, wait around the corner, and if things go to hell, to run up and get help from... Um... Bregan. Bregan's with us, isn't he? Isn't she? she, she Bregan's at the mouth of the cave. Yep. I thought. Yeah. She, she oh, I thought she came down in at some point. She's, she's okay. just sort of watching the exit. So I'm going to tell him to go uh, scram and grab uh, Bregan if. I mean, I can give him a signal. I can go whistle, you know. Yep. Got it. All yeah. right. He's like, no problem. Okay. Roll to see if you can whistle. Okay. So. Uh, Actually, you... sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me do a code word in case I need to lace it into the conversation. <laughs> so mm -hmm. instead of a whistle, I'm going to say, um, boy, I've never seen a, seen a cave without stalagmites. <laughs> <laughs> Pim's like, okay, boss. <laughs> Got it. I'm a waffle. <laughs> anyway. Or waffle. Uh, all right. So uh, okay. with that in mind, uh, the plan, Matt, 
loosely is to make our presence known before we enter, to be discussing our own greed and our desire to. I mean, I can just play it out and just just uh, do my best version of an improv. But but you know, just talk about how we want to make money and and we're here for for the cash and uh, uh, you know. Okay. So but like prior to us entering, you know. Yeah. So we heard you, somebody was hiring. So you move uh, back. Yeah. You move back into also, the. Literally not lying. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. Also, okay. did we hear before before we do that? Did we hear he, someone was hiring? Because that might tip our hand if we go in saying we heard there was an evil wizard hiring help. <laughs> like, what no. is with the wizard comment? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We also nope. don't know if this guy's a wizard. All we know is that yeah. he's kind sure. of aristocratic. All right, let's just, let's just walk he in. in Halifax. Yeah. Oh, Obvious, he's an evil wizard. He's yeah. hired goblins to guard his underground lair. Yeah. All and right. Searching for a book. All right. Look, so, I've, ne I've, I've never uh, trusted a nurse. Sorry, John's getting frustrated. Let's go. Move on. <laughs> you're you're going to go in, right? Okay. Yes, right. we're going in. All right. So you go into the into the uh, the the large grotto with the twelve foot high ceilings. It was milky, glowing crystals that are dripping the, that milky substance onto the ground. Um, instead of the scuffing sound of your boots moving through the sand, now it's like that wet sand that you're moving through. The um, violently red mushrooms uh, decorate the room and you can immediately hear um coming from the other room the, the ongoing conversation between uh, <clears throat> what appears to be this gentleman and these goblins um uh one of the goblins before you kind of move before you raise your voice in in greeting um you can hear one of the goblins actually shout out uh, we, we saw a master three of them all nightly like um and the gentleman says uh Likely that they are searching for the new resident down below, of course. It matters not if any of them, knight or wizard, have procured the gelatinous grimoire. I will make them a generous offer for it. Otherwise, gelatinous. Otherwise, I will destroy them. Stuff like that. Wizard. All right. Because it's the grimoire. Don't don't be that guy. In I'm we go. In, in we go. All right. And so I told Johnson, we'll get you cash. Shing, shing, shing. You hear like blades <laughs> being drawn. <laughs> you hear a rough oh, voice. Who, who goes there? Show yourselves. Is this, is this the out. aristocrat or someone else? You can't tell by my awesome, awesome <laughs> accents. Uh, I see, I see, I see. Just clarifying. <laughs> this is not hey, the aristocrat. Uh, uh, I, I say, ho oh, there, just... Some uh, profiteers in the mines you're looking to. You're like, <laughs> you're here like like rough goblin talk, like spitting amongst each other, like in anger and frustration. Then the the voice rises up. The, the gentleman says, "All right, step forward into the chamber, slowly with your hands raised." I do. Yeah, we we I, have no quarrel. Go with him. Seek no I trot, trot forward in the lead with my staff in the air. Okay, so uh, you see that there is uh, quite a scene in the chamber that you're walking into. Um, what you first notice is that there are a large number of shiny weapons that are pointed directly at you. Um, <laughs> there, sure, sure, sure. Um, there are uh, three goblins, all who are um, uh, standing in front, and they have bows drawn, um, long like horn bows that are basically drawn and pointed at all of you. Um, there, Behind them is a row of what appear to be four very rough looking men look like they've been out in the wild for some time malnourished um with a kind of a feverish look to their eyes and unshaven but they have um spears at the ready um and behind them is a very tall gentleman um and i use the term very loosely uh you immediately immediately recognize him as droon I knew it would be. <laughs> so he is. He is. He, I knew it. He is tall. No, he is tall. It's not Hold the room that we talked to, David. Oh. It's a room. Oh, 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 oh! Sorry, sorry. Yeah, it's not the. Yeah, yeah. We've talked to a bunch of them. Anyways, my, my, just every, no, key detail. Key detail. Is he a wizard? Yeah, okay. Probably not. Let me get to the description here. It's fine. <laughs> Before we start discussing things, uh, so. Uh, he's extremely tall. He towers over the men that are in front of him. Um, his face is covered in the ritual tattoos, the ink tattoos, but he only has one 
Uh, he has uh, two eyes, but one of them is a staring glass eye that has that is ill-fitting in the socket, so it's like bulging and, and staring. He has a long, scraggly white beard that goes down his chest um, that has twigs in it uh, all through it, and his robes are a dirty midnight color, um, and they're embroidered with silver runes all along the hems. Um, he has a golden torque that is close-fitting around his neck, a rune-carved staff that is glowing bright green, and he has linked with chains along the side of his, uh, uh, on the, along the side of his road is, is hanging, um, held in chains, a large spell book that is uh, made out of some sort of dark, uh, uh, roughly cut uh, skin. Um, uh, right, and in the room that you're in here is actually much smaller than the room that you entered. So um, it appears to be oblong heading east to west. It's only about 10 feet north to south, 20 feet east to west. It is a natural cavern. You are entering from the southern side. Uh, to the northern side is an exit, which appears to be a passageway that is about five feet wide heading to the north. Um, Directly opposite the one we came in? Uh, a little, a, 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 a tad to the east, a little bit to the right. Okay. Um, it has rough rock walls and a floor um, that are carved from the solid rock. There is a scintillating crystalline ceiling that has white and aquamarine crystals um, that uh, that have been carved out from like what appears to be like a naturally occurring vein. However, uh, directly in front of you, kind of ensconced in the western side of the room, is a horrific statue of gray stone with pink striations that appears to be made uh, of human skulls that are stacked in a roughly eight foot high column, right? And that column is actually resting upon a plinth of black light soaking marble, right? So kind of picture like Trajan's column with like the winding sculpture that goes all the way up and around, but it's actually made out of skulls all the way up. Um, nice. Awesome thing in place. Yeah. Uh, Amazing. <clears throat> there is uh, what appears to be scrawled writing in purple paint, which has been dashed across the statue, which you can't quite make out because it's sort of turned to the... The writing has been sort of skewed to a different angle than what you're looking at directly. Um, but it looks to be something that was not, like, originally part of the statue itself. Okay. Amazing. I thought he said, by the way, Druge, not Droon, initially. As in muscle. I did. Druge. I did. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized it was Droon, and I was like, oh, because Druge being down here would have been... Quite that would have been a kicker. That would have been an it... awesome twist. But anyway, yes. <laughs> Go ahead. These are the ones. These are the ones that we saw. We saw the when the when that one, the, the bright white one, the one with the light, when he dove into the pool. I I, I uh, wave sort of oafishly. Hey. <laughs> ah. Well, that's all they know about you is that you have a penchant for swimming. Is there anything else about you that I should know? You can notice that his oh, voice yeah. is much more genteel than any other drone that you've sure. met before. Uh, I, I feel it is necessary to mention that I am in my skivvies still. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yes. Uh -oh. Quite a sight, the lot of you. Indeed. Uh, Are you I... David or not? Come on. <laughs> Sorry. I, I'm, I'm Brother Gwillem, the uh, uh, a, a traveling friar, man of the claw. Uh, we've come here. Not much claw. Uh, not much, indeed. <laughs> indeed, a man of wit, I see. Quite studious, you are. <laughs> um, the water was cold. Uh, oh. uh, out with it, brother. I don't have much time. I and my fellow Droon claim this as our own, so therefore you are trespassing, so better explain yeah. yourself quickly. The, the, you, cl you claim the, the grotto itself as your own? I claim everything below, ah, everything below the grottoes, everything below Fog Lake is ours, as it's quite evident, as I'm sure you've seen, that evidence of our ancestors litter this place. Uh, Are you here to rob the Droon of their rightful uh, heritage? Uh, quite to the contrary. We are uh, here to help the Droon. We just spoke to one of your kind a few days ago. Uh... 
Uh-oh. And 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 swore an oath to uh, do everything we could to assist in the revivification. Of what was the the great sleeping dragon of the water? Elof. Elof. Of Elof. And it would appear that uh, fortune has led us to you. So. How do you know that name? Well. Who is the... You muppet. You, you You're hesitate. Such a muppet. You hesitate. You have yeah, come you upon... You I'm not saying you are wrong, friend. I'm not saying that I what deny the existence of this creature. I just thought we were going to kind of play this out. I didn't know I was going to be the mouthpiece, but I guess it's true. I am the one, I am the one with 17 charisma. Whoops. <laughs> Also, David, don't forget to you don't have to you don't actually have to act it out. If you want to just tell me what no, you're trying to get at, you can do that. You know, uh, I'm just trying to. Uh, <laughs> it's fine. We can we can we can role play this out. I've already dug the hole. <laughs> um, no, no, maybe you better not. <laughs> he motions with a hand, and he's like, he's, and he tells his gentleman, he's like, all right, but you know, and they kind of go to parade rest, right? Like they kind of put their spirit sure, up. Sure, little, sure, sure. You know, I'll, I'll deflect and say. Uh, uh, we are a scholarly sort, and uh, we have read. We're uh, bounty hunters. Many. We're, we're well, bounty hunters. Sure. We're here for a rogue wizard that's wanted by the church that has a big price in their head. We're not here for any of your artifacts. However, <laughs> we did overhear that you might be interested in the exploration of this grotto, and we are skilled adventurers that are able to assist in that endeavor for a price. Ah, now we come to it. As I thought, tomb robbers at heart. Well, I appreciate Not the honesty. Not tomb robbers, my, my lord. We are bounty hunters. Mm. The only treasure that we seek is a rogue wizard wanted by our people. And experts in an semantics as well. Rogue. Well, I detect... Uh, like... semantics. We're playing a semantics game now, sir. <laughs> bounty hunter, tomb robber. Many names Quite for the different. same thing. But I can appreciate the motive. Simple, bestial but able to be dealt with. Well, that is the case, actually. As I have been stymied in my attempts, I was just about to go down to the uh, room to the south, where you perhaps have come from. Might have information for me as to the contents of that chamber. For I have not been able to find what I've been looking for, which is a book, a book called the Gelatinous Grimoire. I desire it greatly, for my own reasons, I am willing to pay anyone who should procure it for me. I could give you that permission to explore these grottos in my name, should you leave everything untouched and inform me of any other artifacts of the Druin that you may find, and perhaps if you do find the book, to bring that back to me. Hmm. Have I heard of the gelatinous t- tome in my wizard research? No. Okay. Do any of the carvings in that other room in that chamber to the south seem to indicate any kind of drunish origin? Uh, not of the drun that you know of. That you have like, of did, contemporary drun, no. And did the scrabies not say that it was some sort of temple to a dark god before? They believed that what, uh, what they overheard this gentleman referring to may be something that he was looking for. They, they, no, they said that they said that there was some cult that yes. was in the, in the grottos. They, they, not with any authority. They were surmising okay. that there was some, some sort of cult that used oh, to, yeah. that used to be here. Yeah. Okay. Because of the man, man, man made man, you know, uh, archway, you know what I mean? In the stone quarter that goes beyond, but they got a bad juju feeling from down there. Okay. So I say to, First of all, introductions. What do we call them? My name is Akater Unlight. Akater Unlight? Sounds ominous. I am Elfric Bristle Whistle. <laughs> You've forgotten your own last name, haven't you, son? Perfizzle. Alfred wow. Perfizzle. Thank Glad you. to see you all invested like in your own shit. <laughs> 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 Hey, I've been drinking quite a bit of whiskey. Just leave me alone. All right. Well, Alfred Bristle with companion, Argus, the Doty, Halifax, the Fell Handed, and Brother Gwillem, the White. The lip flapper. Yeah, the flip flapper. 
Listen, <laughs> listen. All right, all right. Talky talky. I, now, you know, if, if you gave me a second to breathe, Alfred, without pushing me so hard, I might have not gotten nervous. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I do that. He doesn't want to watch us fight amongst ourselves, right? So they're not wanted here, boss. We, would, we don't want them we around agree, here. We would agree to explore on your behalf. Uh, as a source, of, as a sign of good faith, to that in that other chamber, we found some strange moss. We found some metallic crystals that seem to speak when someone enters, and they mentioned the name of the unseen lord, faceless lord, the, faceless lord, the Does faceless that lord. Mean you? Are you yes, sure that's what they said, that. and that it was the crystals that speaking this? You yes. must show so me immediately. We're mortal, mortal, in DC to the faceless lord. Something like that. You cut out there, Mike. Yeah. Oh, sorry. It said Neo Mortal in obeisance to the Faceless Lord. Well, you have had a lot of whiskey. It was Bow Mortal before the Faceless Lord. (laughs) (laughs) No words. So we're doing it live. You speak true. We're doing it live. And there he goes, finishing the glass. I I must see it. At least I can't get any drunker now. I must hear it for myself. This way. Uh, okay. Before you enter, let me describe the rest of the chamber. There's also an archway of profane hieroglyphs and sculpture that do not seem drunish in nature to me, my lord. Say no more. That must be it. The entrance to the temple of the faceless lord, my ancestors. The book must reside within. I will take it from here, gentlemen. Thank you so much. Off you go. <laughs> right? Okay. You don't, uh, don't want to oh. hire us as backup or he's got backup or something, you know you gave him free information he's like thanks <laughs> <I'm sick. laughs> listen maybe this is why i was trying to do it in a <laughs> circumspect way boys i was trying to right. think of a little as he, you know, as he as he moves southwards he, he looks back and he's like do not steal or touch anything that you find in here not only for your own safety but should you live to talk about it, I myself personally will hunt you down. And he, 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 uh, well, he before he, he, he you go, to... did you see this rogue wizard anywhere that we're looking for? Oh, information for information. We mm-hmm. we have heard that this wizard uh, is down below. This is what the goblins have told us, and I was hiring them in order to guard the stairways down to the north, in order that I could hunt here in safety for the gelatinous grimoire. What and will you right please, here? I care yeah, not though for the wizard. Your goblin hirelings not to fill us with arrows if we go explore. All we want is the wizard. If you want the wizard, you're more than ha- more than free to go hunting down. I could care less, unless that wizard perhaps has the book herself. In which case, I would once again pay handsomely for the information, even more handsomely should you return it to my hands. Well, Other than that. Happy hunting, gentlemen. Happy hunting to you, uh, oh, Mr. Good. Unleight. Yeah, good luck to you down there. Right. I go, guys, this is not a bad thing, man. He's going to go trigger every trap uh-huh. in the uh-huh. down that hallway. And when we hear the horrible screams, we can go sweep up. Yeah, not bad, actually. All right. He goes He goes off down to the south, and you guys are left standing there. Um, I'm going to eyeball one of the goblins. Like, you guys going to give us any trouble? Well, they're, they're heading off. They're heading off with a... Oh, they're going with him? Okay. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I hope the scrabies got out of there. <laughs> you, said there you said there were four humans as well? Yeah. yeah. So, three well, humans. that's actually true. Like, the four oh, humans are going to go with him. The, the goblins actually will... Um, well, they're going to retreat back to the Scarlet Pimperel room to the south and kind of okay. hang there for a little while just to kind of watch you a little bit. Make sure we well, don't. But now he's then. basically, like, you guys are basically serving the purpose that he was going to hire those goblins for, which is to basically distract or guard against the uh, the rogue prismist. We're useful. Uh, right. Yeah, I think we should, I think we okay. should uh, go de- check out the stairwell, go head on down. Try and pump the goblins for information first or no? I wouldn't mind talking to them, but it's up to you. So you can see that in this room, this small room that you're in, that the, uh, the writing that is on the horrible, obscene statue that is directly in front of you uh, says, uh, in jagged handwriting and purple paint, says, Do not touch. 
<laughs> and there appears to be some sort of um, engraving on the black plinth as well. Mm -hmm. Can I study that? Uh, getting close, you can see that engraved upon it. Uh, unlike the like the purple paint painting that's been splashed right across the statue, this appears to be a bit part of the original construction. Um, engraved on it, it says the acquiescent. You want to touch that, don't you, Wiz Five? I do. You can see that there. Um, once again, that the statue itself on top of this is eight feet tall, made of spiraling skulls. That the skulls themselves uh, are not stone; they are actual real bone. One of them, although most of them appear to be human, you see that one of them is definitely more of a goblin shape. Um, and you can also see that in some, uh, what you what you thought was just like the dark ocular cavities of many of those skulls, that uh, that there are, appear to be something glinting within some of those dark cavities. Ooh. Is, I um... get my face right in front of one, John, and stare into that ocular cavity. You see that there is some sort of dark, exquisite, small gem resting in the ocular cavity. Multiple gems and multiple eye sockets. Ooh. Oh. Well, that sounds like a really fun game of operation. I was just going to say, we need the tweezers. Is, <laughs> this isn't like, so, like you said that the skulls are stacked on a base of some kind, but there's they it's are. not skulls all the way through. There's some sort of stone core. You know, you not that you can see. It's you on. It's on. It it's on a black marble cool. plinth, which is engraved with right. an acquiescent. And then there's. It's basically like a, a tall, um, spiraling column, eight feet tall, right. uh, completely comprised of skulls. I was but wondering if there was some purple striation in it or something like that, right? Oh uh, yes, there that is. Was, like, yeah, yeah, there is a striation. Uh, what did I say? Uh, pink, pink striations. Yeah. Um, in the skulls. Yeah, basically, like like. Woven in into the oh yeah, oh into oh interesting yeah okay I, I was wondering if this is like a you know maybe a buried dolmen that's had skulls stacked around it but I mm. there is also not. oh I, this is a kind of a key thing too so um, there also appear to be loose skulls uh, some that are actually scattered around the base of the uh, of the plinth itself hmm. those don't say do not touch I wonder. Uh, Ulfric, when when you looked in there, the the gems, do they seem to be like embedded in something, or just sitting there loose? I'm not sure I could tell. Right? They are. It's tough to tell. They're not like they're not like hanging in midair in the ocular cavity, like serving as like eyeballs. They were just like resting with gravity, like sitting in the bottom of the orbital like socket. Sit, like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it didn't look like they were like you know affixed in any way. No, but they are like resting flat resting. in the yeah. in the base yeah. of the orbital socket. Yeah. Does anybody have uh, any candles? Does anybody bring uh, a candle? I don't have. I just had an idea. But I have yeah, yeah. You see the yeah. goblins in the other room are like peering around the corner at you, and they're just yeah, they're like they're watching us. Yeah. You know, we have a whole retinue of spies right and now, and they're like they're like Brian Fra us. they're like Brian Frau goblins, right? Like so, yeah. they're all sort of mismatched. Like one's got like a pot helm that is just like uh, the slits of his I eyes. Think, but, I think but we should make But they're peering the around the corner, like like yeah. low mer low. Low, Mo, Larry, and Curly. You know what I mean? Like looking around the corner, and they're um, they're kind of just smiling at you and just look, looking. Oh, oh, especially, especially at Alfric. <laughs> this is the whole thing, guys. We, we, we're yeah. I can I can make friends with goblins. I'm gonna be like, I'll pull out of my backpack one of the two bottles of spirits I bought in um, back when we were visiting the bishop, mm -hmm. and I'll be like, all right, guys, here you go. Fuck off. <laughs> <Get lost. laughs> be off with you. Thanks, buddy. Have fun. <laughs> Ask yeah, him right. questions. Don't just. I don't want to ask him. Him. I just want him to go away. I don't want him watching us. Who we're up to, no, we're they, up to no good. They have like a little scuffle trying to grab the the. What, what did you give him again? Like a like a. a, a I wine? bought two bottles of whiskey. Okay, in yeah, whatever. yeah. So they they have like a little tussle over the bottles and stuff like that, and they kind of go just so, out of sight. Can you show me? Can you show me the the map real quick again, Ted? I get the sense that in our mind's eye, we're in a deep cavernous space, and we're in like a two-bedroom apartment trying to be, to be sneaky right now. We're in here. Yeah, okay. Right? It's very small. And the goblins are right at this doorway. Yeah. yeah. And the faceless Lord Temple is... Okay. Yeah, a turn goes by after, that, after those interactions. My, my, point, my point is, like, we're not getting away with anything discreet in the place with a mob of goblins and fae and various things hanging hanging out in earshot, right? Like these aren't these these aren't these aren't like a hundred yards down around the corner. 
these guys are literally sitting there listening to every word we converse yeah. between us. I didn't have to do much to step yeah. over. Yeah, 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 we'll yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so if, if we're trying to be discreet, let's um, remember that we're not like deeper in the dungeon, right? Well, like, well Argus did right there. Argus did yeah. get them to go away. Like they're they're okay. They, they, so they sort of like jump happily. You can hear them snickering and and popping the cork on the bottle and all that sort of oh, stuff. Like, cool, very cool. happy that they got this. I can so hand my staff to Halifax if you want to use it to. Well, here's apply. here's here's what I'm what I'm what I'm thinking. Gotcha. Um, I have I do have with me a ball of twine. Mm -hmm. If we could get something sticky on the end of that twine, we could just yeah. flick it into the hole. We don't have to touch anything. No, I I, I don't other have any. Gold, I don't have any. Other gold can provide gold. something sticky. I'm sure. Hey, <laughs> um, wait. Uh, I was thinking the, like uh, a glob of melty wax, something just swinging on the piece of end of the string, just flick it into the eye hole. At that point, why not just put a glob of wax on the tip of your dagger and stick it in there? I, I got it. I got it. The torches, the ends are pitch, right? They're they're you you, know, you take a your your torch shaft and you wrap the end in like cloth and whatever, and then you soak it in pitch, and that's what's burning. We just need some soft pitch. You know, take a piece of the tar off of there, work it in your hand till it's sticky, put it on the end of a fishing pole or whatever, and right in and boink. You don't ever touch the skulls, you just get the gem. You're a genius. I'm going to do it. Operation. I'm going to do it. Okay. I'm going to step away. Uh, the yeah. Consequence is <laughs> that it'll, be, it'll take a turn. Are you okay with that? Yeah, we'll just have to light the torch one because I think that uh, light spell is about to run out. It, so, will, it uh, will at the end of this, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, so... I'm gonna stand at the doorway with my head, sort of, <laughs> my hands like this as I watch this. All right. So the fishing rod, the end of it would be very, very thin. I'll get that out of my pack. I'll blob the pitch on the end there. Yep. And I'll go in and push it against the gem. Okay. Uh, so up. nothing untoward happens, uh, and you do, you're able to like touch the uh, the gem. Um, it, it sticks, and you pull. There is resistance, however. Okay. And when you when you p apply a little bit more, like the the pitch sort of, I mean the the uh, the end of the pole sort of pops off, and the gem is still there in the socket. It appears that Halifax is um, prediction that it may be a fix may be true. <laughs> hey, the skulls on the ground have gems in them. Uh, no, they do not actually. They also look uh -huh. to be. Uh, Alfred, if you're looking at the skulls on the ground, you notice that they are of a much lighter shade of ivory bone than the ones that are on the statue. If that tells you anything. Offerings. Do they all, I, I can't remember if you've said this already, do they, do they all look like human skulls? or do, is All of them like... except for one, which appears to be a goblin. Uh, of the ones the, of the ones that are actually um, part of the statue itself. But the, the loose ones down, those all look like those all look, appear to be human. Yes, um, as um, Argus pulls back his pole in disappointment, um, the uh, the light spell on Gwilym's stone winks out of existence and um, casts the small room into darkness. Okay. All right. Well, it's you know I'm right here. I'll just pull out the old tinder box and uh, spark up onto the torch I was working with, and then hand that to Pim. All right. Do we want to follow uh, um, Unlight Asshole Face, and, or do we want to go to Af After the Wizard? Uh, I, I say well, we go uh, check out this doorway to the north. Go down. Yeah, and try to get but a, I, I feel like there's got to be a way to get a gem out. I want to get at least one gem, you know? Grab a skull, bro. His name, by the way, was Hecator, which is H-E-C-A-T-O-R. Oh, Hecator. H-E-C-T-O-R? H-E-C-A-T-O-R. A cater. Cater online. Okay. Great bad guy name. All right. Well, I'll think about the gem, and when we come back this way, we can do a smash and grab and yeah, run. Yeah, I, 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 something tells me that don't touch this is probably a good idea. Yeah, I got to think about it. All right. So, um, you can once again, there appears to be uh, only appears to be only one exit out of this room, which is a passageway uh, five foot wide that leads directly to the north. Um, right. Shining your uh, torch in that direction, um, you can see that it opens up into a similarly dimensioned uh, chamber. Um, uh, just sort of staggered to the east a little bit, 
with another exit that actually leads to the north, just a little bit skewed to the east, just as similar as this one. Um, but there is also appears to be a um, a worked passageway that leads directly to the east out of here as well. However, dominating um, the room in your torchlight, once again, you are still in the in the skull's room, right? But you're just shining your light down that passageway to yeah. kind of illuminate. You can see that in roughly the same spot in this new chamber, there is another statue on top mm -hmm. of black marble plinth. But on this statue, it is... Uh, a mass of what appears to be made out of black, uh, carved out of black stone with purple striations, a mass of one foot uh, wide eyeballs forming a rough sphere about five feet around in total. So it's like a, like a sphere on top of a black marble plinth. That sphere is made up of, of like one foot wide um, eyeballs themselves. Is there a Does this one have a message that says, please touch? There appears to be some sort of message written into the plinth. You can't really tell because you're not in the room. Right. Um, you also see that um, sort of wavering in your torchlight um, in the... Uh, basically, I would say, like... Uh, um, I actually don't know if you would see it. You, you see some sort of, like, what appears to be small figurines in the southeastern corner, but that's only, like, in the, your peripheral vision. Like little mini, right. mini miniature figures. Let's real quick. In the room. Wait, the important detail here. Real quick. How many torches do we have? And how many we only have one flask of oil for our lantern. How many torches do we have? I have three. I have I, three. Oh, I, have I have one. I actually have uh five. A bundle of two. Well, well, what did you bring to the party, David? Assuming oh, that the pit, the, assuming that the pitch <laughs> still lights, I have five torches. Okay, great. We should be good for a while. Okay, good. Thank you. Are you going to put on your robe or what? Are you just walking around naked? You said it was drenched and it would penalize my attributes. So it I'm is, not yeah. putting it on. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, of course I'm not. All right. no. <laughs> what, what use do I have for that robe? No, it's drying <laughs> in the sun. All right. How oh. dare you hinder his attributes? <laughs> why why do you even blood. ask? Really? I'm not trying to get like sogged into some terrible trap and... <laughs> As the, as the mob, some deadly machine just pulls on my robe slowly. And I, Ed, please drop it. It's just funny because not only you're owning your breech clout, but you're actually like carrying your gear. Like, you're, uh -huh, you uh -huh, yeah, no. pull off your backpack across your naked bag. You're like, I've got five torches. You know what, John? If you'd ever played uh, Elden Ring, you'd know this is completely normal. <laughs> right? That's true. Let's start off as a naked guy. All right. So, so uh, Halifax will look in the room with uh, Pim holding the torch behind him. Mm hmm. Uh, look, see if it seems safe enough. Shield up, step on it. Step on it in that room in the north? Okay, cool. All right, so once right again, you, rough rock walls in the floor. Um, the uh, the ceiling here is also crystalline and scintillating with the white and aquamarine, very similar to the one, um, exactly the same as the one that, the, the room that you stepped out from. The eye statue is right there. Um, the black marble plinth has a engraving on it that you can easily see in the torchlight, uh, Pim's torchlight, that says, The Honored Servant. Hmm. And the acquiescent, the honored servant. Yes. So you can see here, though, that the uh, natural passageways that lead to the north and the east quickly actually become man made cut stone blocks unlike the other passageways that you've traveled through so far. So it appears both north and east, it turns into man-made structures, right? However, in the southeastern corner, there is a, uh, a number of tiny figures. And they are made out of, I'm checking, one second. Um, they are made out of stone, and they appear to be made out of the same stone that the floor is made out of. All right, like a, like this dark, uh, rough, gray rock. Um, but expertly carved, um, extremely, extremely lifelike. And they are the following figures. And they're all about, like, you know, like little miniature figures, right? Like D&D &D miniatures. Um, cool. there that, are, that tiny, huh? Yep, tiny. Like little, there are seven goblins, all unique. There are uh, two identical women 
that appear to be uh, rather pudgy, stout, robed, um, frizzle-haired women. They are exactly the same. There are five... Hold on, Mike. There are five scrabies. There are two male knights, armored knights, and one female knight. You recognize them immediately as Kestifer, Gestevin, and Bethmilda, who we've met before a long time ago. There is one tall Droon you recognize with, uh, with as Hecator, Unlight. And there are four what appear to be rough-looking men, all of which you immediately recognize to be Hecator's servants. As you are looking at these figures, you hear, you see like the, the, the debris around the figures actually start to shake a little bit and you can hear like a rumbling <laughs> and erupting from the stone, like <laughs> coming out are four likenesses, all of which look exactly like you. That is freaking me out. Let's go home. Love it. <laughs> Love Wait, is, it. Is, is Willem's also wearing his underwear? And and Pim, sorry too. So Pim is Pim also shows up. Um. Well, we have to take ours, guys. Obviously, I am kind of inclined to pick it no up. No one else yeah. took theirs, and they all went into this room. So. So there's two identical women that are pudgy and robed. Does that mean that? the wizard went through here twice or they have a twin that we don't know about or did she take what? her statue it made another one and then she put it back or something let's test the theory yeah all right i'll pick mine up okay nothing happens you can pick it up it's rather heavy try and leave the room yeah i'll try and leave the room to the uh to the northern corridor the northern corridor okay so you you are able to go into that corridor you can see that it is a 10 foot uh, long, and it opens up into what appears to be a uh, a large, very large uh, chamber, a man-made chamber. Um, you can, without stepping into the room to investigate, you can see that uh, there appears to be like a uh, like a rainbow-hued nature to the entire room. Like like the entire walls are are covered with some sort of substance that is like uh, iridescent with the, all the colors of the rainbow. Um, and Here's there are, oops, <laughs> that was, that was Siri on my watch. Oh, Siri. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Siri. Um, you can hear a, uh, you can see that there are, uh, moon-like puffballs that are actually drifting with like long mycelia, um, hanging down from the ceiling in this room beyond. Right, I'm going to back out a little bit. I don't want to get mycelia. So it looks, it looks rather strange in there, but it appears to be like cut stone, right? Not not okay. natural. Um, anyways, you are you have successfully stepped out from the room that you're in. All right. You want to place your uh, figure down on the ground in the other room and then come back in. Yeah. Okay. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah. Put it down in the hallway. Yeah. And then step back into the first room. Okay. Nothing happens in that southeastern corner. Okay. Weird. All right. Hmm. Um. Uh. I mean, I, I we got to figure out if this is like a voodoo doll thing, right? Um, um, looking at turning the other way, like it, the figures are on the opposite side of the room from the the eyeball thing. Uh, yes. Is that right? Uh, are the eyeballs looking at us? Uh, they are. Some of them are. Some of them aren't. Right. But they're, so they're, they're, I guess I'm asking, are they're they're fixed? They're not like you know. Yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly right. Yeah, they are made out of some sort of black stone with um with um uh, purple striations throughout it. But unlike the bones of this of the unlike the the structure of the bone of the of the skull statue, it is not they're not like real eyes, right? You know what I mean? Like it's made out of stone, carved. Um, is there room to like walk walk around it? Is there anything behind it? Mm -hmm. You can or walk all the way around it. Doesn't appear to be anything there. There doesn't appear to be any detritus around the statue either. Like like there was the other skulls around the skull statue, but there isn't. There doesn't appear to be anything around this statue. And the eyes are uniform all the way around it. Yeah, it doesn't appear to be like 
like they're not in some sort of like pattern. They're just sort of like randomly kind of put together in a vaguely spherical sense, but like they're looking in all sorts of different directions and stuff like that, you know. Um, it's almost a little bit they're, more abstract. They're not moving, though. They're not moving, they're, no. No, they're just, it's like black stone <clears throat> carved uh, to look like and, eyes. And they, it doesn't appear like a, a number of them are looking at uh, in, in any particular direction. Like, are they looking at something in the corner? Are they looking at the figures? Are they looking at the doors? They are looking at all those things, but not with any discernible pattern or intent. Okay. And the eastern corner out of this room? Mm -hmm. Do we see stairs or anything? Or... Uh, let's see, to the east, uh, you can see that there's a, just a five foot, um, long passageway, cut stone, um, that, uh, ends in a quarter that runs north to south. So it hits like a, a T junction, right? Um, that goes off into either direction without stepping out to, to observe, but directly in front of you across and that, that, that north south quarter appears to be five foot wide. So on the other side directly as, as you're kind of looking eastward, you can see that there is a small alcove, about two foot wide, about five feet tall, um, in that wall. And it looks like, based upon Pim's torchlight, that there is a repeating amount of those alcoves that, that dot the corridor going from north to south. You can see one clearly, though, right in front of you. And anything in the alcove? Um, like a little urn or a statue or something? Yeah, from this distance, you can see that there's some sort of pile of smashed debris of some sort, and that there appears to be a long, dried substance of some sort that is uh, splashed on the wall. Mm. But other than that, like, once again, you're sort of, like, just peering down, you know? So you can't quite... Make yeah. It. Uh, what about the... the, 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 the You said the... Flu the outside this... At kind of this doorway, it, go it starts becoming, like, worked stone... Yep. Four tiles. Both the north and the um, east. Yeah, um, seeing, uh, you know, even without like seeing it uh, in in detail, the splash, the rubble, the stone tiles. Halifax is is suspicious of things like pressure plates and traps that can be worked into you know patterns in the floor like that. Does that seem to be um, uh, a trap that's gone off? Uh, no, no, no indication of that. There doesn't appear to be actually any tiles of any sort. It appears to be just oh. rough worked uh, stone, right? Oh, okay. Yeah, so it looks like the natural, uh, the natural yeah. stone of these chambers of, of these uh, grottos have actually has actually been like cut and formed, basically. Oh, okay. So yeah. it's not like tiled. Okay. No. Okay. Yeah, but it's just right. it's just like been leveled and smooth and you know right angles and stuff like that. Yeah. Actually, on that note, leveled and smooth. Like, does it show centuries of wear? Like, many booted feet have traveled these corridors, or is this still sort of, you know, rough from the chisel centuries ago? Um, that's a good question. I wouldn't say that, yeah, I don't think it's, like, worn down from, like, countless feet. It's, right, so, okay. But it is old. Like, the workmanship is, is very, very old. It just probably yeah. hasn't been used that much. Right. But we're not going to see, like, oh, look... There's a path in the stone from six thousand people. No, no, up no, there. not like those yeah. stairs you see in some cathedrals, right? Like, like where the middle is uh, dipped. Yeah, yeah. No. That's what I was getting at. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. No. And there's and there's no like dust on the floor. Like, w I'm trying to see like maybe if there's footprints or uh, it's more disturbed going one way than the other. Uh, the northern door, the northern door versus the um, eastern door. It, it does appear that there is more dis. So there's there's signs of like of people walking around, you know, in, in here, right? Like the stuff has been disturbed. Um, but, uh, you can, you can tell when you look at it closely that the Northern one appears to have been more traveled than the Eastern. All right. I kind of like the idea of going North. I agree. Okay. Except for those mycelium. All right. Um, All investigating right. this room has taken a turn. Okay. The worse. Are we all leaving our statuettes behind? What are we doing with these? Yeah. Well, mine doing? is in the, the, the corridor. I'll pick it up as I go. I want to keep it. It could sit next to my miniature brass gnome. <laughs> there you go. Oh. Maybe I should I leave my brass. I'm going to leave my brass gnome here Ooh. where my figure was. Ooh. <laughs> wow. As an offering. Okay. 
Anyone else taking any statues? I'm tempted to, like, break the drone's statue and see if anything happens. <laughs> <laughs> you hear the but you, you don't subscribe yeah. to those those weird pagan superstitions, Will. I mean, that's the whole thing. <laughs> Seems like the slimy sword. Uh, um, I'm going to speak a, a soft blessing upon the statues of myself and my friends. Okay. Uh, Nothing appears to happen. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, we should we should test this out. Uh, what are you doing about? I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get a tinder box. Okay, I'm gonna light a match. Hmm. We don't okay. have matches. Uh, light a match, uh, Charlie. There's a torch right here. Dude. I'm gonna get my I'm gonna get my uh, my my big lighter out. Yes, I'll take the torch, uh -huh. and I will thrust the statue in the middle of the torch. But I'm gonna sort of just like hold a little heat under the the foot of my own statue from a distance, mm -hmm. right? Like I'm not burning it, mm -hmm. okay. and see if I feel anything as it inches closer. <laughs> no, you don't feel anything. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That's all right. right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's hard to try. So yeah. um, you thrust you, right. you thrust a uh, Hecator's in uh, 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 a Cater's um thing into the torch though, or no? No, that was, he was doing his own. I was doing my own. Oh, okay, um, but just gently. Gotcha. Okay, yeah, yeah. Nothing sure. Seems, nothing seems to happen. Um, I do want to take Hecator's statue with me, though. Okay. Is that the only? Okay. So you're taking Hecator's in your own? Yes. Do you guys want to take the the other guys in case this proves this any use to us? Well, I'm taking mine. Sure. Uh, and I should re remind you, John, that the brass dome will appear on my pillow next morning. Uh, right, that's a good thing. Oh. <laughs> Alfred and Halifax, are you taking any statues or no? You guys want to take the, the mercenaries statues or anything like that? Yeah, why are the goblins not making statues? They did. There's seven goblins. There's seven there's goblins. Seven, there. Literally, everyone in this cave is present uh, as a statue. Uh, I'm definitely going to take the wizard's two statues and I'll take my own. Okay. Halifax, you should take the uh, your your. Your nightly friends. Uh, that's that's what I was thinking. Well, yeah, should, I'll take I'll take mark them own. down. Whatever you end up taking. Uh, this is a good, actually speaking of um, uh, as a man of the world, would I be aware of anything like a game of chess in the Dolmen Wood? Uh, yeah, there'd probably be chess, something like that. Yeah. Or an equivalent game. Uh, this would be great chess set. Sorts. Uh. uh um, hmm. I'm, I'm curious. Okay, okay. I don't want to slip track here forever. I, I, I'm, I'm wondering if these are going to come into play in some sort of uh, other uh, circumstance, guys. So, uh, uh, this looks like weird magic to me. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll just, I'll just keep mine in, in the mages. Yeah. Although, I guess, I guess Mike has one of the mages on him as well. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't realize you grabbed them. You can have. Oh, sorry. No, I, I didn't. I didn't grab the. Um, sorry. Goodness. You grab the drone. I'm still a little sick, so my, my brain is foggy. I grab the drone. You and have I both. The you have the twin mages. Okay, perfect. There we go. Let's go north. Cool. Before our torch runs out. Okay. Right. So you head into this um this large chamber. So uh sorry, give me one second. I'm gonna find it here so I can give you the dimensions. Okay, so this is a perfectly rectangular chamber. You are entering um, almost from the middle of the southern wall, a little bit to the east. It is 15 feet north to south and uh, 30 feet east to west, so quite large. Um, dark stone blocks pockmarked once again. The ceiling is 12 feet high here. Um, the there are patches all over the walls of some sort of mold that appears to be rainbow-hued, which is what Argus had relayed back to you guys. All right? There are moon-like puffballs that are growing on the ceiling, like bright sort of white puffballs, um, and they have like this drooping mycelia that's hanging down, uh, basically illuminating the entire room with their kind of uh, lunar <clears throat> luminescence. Um, there is... A, there are large double doors to the uh, to the north, 
about 15 feet in from the western wall. They are made out of gray sandstone. Each of them is carved with a two-foot-wide, three-pupiled eye. All right, so they, it looks like a set of eyes, like one on either door, but each of those eyes has three pupils. Very sort of off-putting. There is, however, another door um, to the east. And that door is a single door. It is in the eastern wall um, in the southeastern corner. Now, in front of that door, however, is a rather small, short Plump woman with long, gray, frizzled hair, wearing purple robes that are embroidered with a fine, swirling, golden pattern. Um, she has a whisk wicker basket, which is uh, set on the ground next to her, that is uh, sort of over um, overflowing with sort of roots and berries of all sorts. And she has got a staff um, that is made out of pure crystal, and on top of that staff is a jagged crystal that glows a pale orange. A prism, you might say. And she is hunkered down in front of that door and appears to have one, uh, she has, and she's using the the one, the staff is sort of like a crutch a little bit uh, for balance, and she's like kind of feeling the door in front of her, this small sort of door. And she turns around and she's got these sort of uh, big, moon-like eyes, right? Like like almost like as if she's wearing glasses. That's how large her eyes are. You know what I mean? She sort of like blinks owlishly at you. And she's like, oh, oh my. Hello. Welcome. I didn't expect to have visited so soon. I heard commotion down south, but they appear to, appear to have moved away. And who might you be? Does she match our little figurine? She matches two of them. Yeah, two of them, yeah. Yeah. John, also, just just a, a reminder: Do we have a description? Because if yep. we do, because I I can't you remember. Do. Meyer of Drew the gave it to that you. We're, of the, what we're who, Meyer who we're Dr looking at. Muscle Meyer Druge gave you the description, and the knights gave it to you. And, yeah. and she matches, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, better alive. You're coming with us. No, no, wait. That's not right. Um, I am Marjoram Griver. Hey, Marjoram, nice, a, a pleasure to meet you. It's been so long since I found someone worthy of conversation. Indeed, uh, in a uh, damp uh, hovel such as this, though it has its charms, uh, 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 conversation must be hard to come by. It is indeed. Uh, may, I've, I've been may down I here ask for so what, long. what brought you down here? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm searching for my companion, uh, a warrior. Her, her name is Meg. Perhaps you've seen her? Uh, does that ring a bell with any of the statues we saw? Sorry. Nope. Nope. Uh, Meg, no, don't believe we have. Oh, Could you a, describe it for us? Well, she's uh, she's quite tall, pretty in her own way. Um, a doughty warrior, oh. though. I, I'm so glad that I brought her with me, but she appears to have gotten lost. Maybe it was me who got lost. It's quite possible. Who knows? It's so dark in some of these chambers. And it how just... long ago was this, my dear? Oh, it couldn't have been more than a, a day ago, I suppose. It's so tough. It's hard to tell the time that's passing down here. I just came sure, here sure. looking just to spend some time and some light, after all. It's much too dangerous above ground now for me, I'm afraid. And and, and I'm sorry. I, I'm i a bit of a uh, a flighty one. What what day was yesterday? Uh, yesterday. I, I, don't, I don't actually know the date, unfortunately. It's been such a long time. Perhaps you could inform me... Uh, Father. <laughs> madam. Uh, I was trying to figure out if she was... Marjoram, please, please. Marjoram, not madam. <laughs> I was trying to be polite. You know, um, Marjoram is the name of the person we're looking for, too. Is that true? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, I have to... Go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say... Is a, um... Never mind. You go ahead, dude, because I think I, I, whatever I say is going to get us in trouble. <laughs> well, I think that won't get us in trouble, too. That's the beauty of it. Um, uh, so, uh, well, well, what if you're... Uh, I feel like I've heard tell of you around these parts, my dear. Uh, uh, is someone looking for me? A, a sister, perhaps, of yours? A, a si 
No, I don't. I don't have any siblings that I'm aware of. Oh, you seem to speak such could, strange words. I could. I could have sworn I saw someone. It looks just like you, but I must have been mistaken. Someone that looks like me. Just a friendly well, sort, I suppose. I don't know how that could be. That's what, well, I suppose. Madam, you've you've been in these caves for a while. I have. We just came across the strangest artifact in the other room. It's a large statue that seems to make miniatures of the people that have passed it. Are you? Did you study this phenomenon at all? Are you a? Practitioner of the arcane, and your staff seems to indicate that you are a powerful wizard. Uh, I wouldn't call myself powerful, but yes, I am a dabbler, of course. Uh, you may have heard uh, that, uh, well, I'm, I'm what is known as a prismist. Uh, so I, 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 a more rarefied, uh, rarefied, uh, ugh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, aspect of magic. But, um... Uh, these miniatures you speak of, uh, yes, I've I've noticed them, but I didn't I didn't really take notice of them. It wasn't really what I was interested in. Can can I pull out? I'm gonna pull out the one of myself, ah. and I pull out one of her, and I kind of bring them up to her like this and be like, I only ask, madam, because here's myself and here's you. Well, I I I say I can't deny that it looks very much like me and. That is a handsome fellow, just like yourself. <laughs> well, I can't explain it. It's quite strange. Well, there must be something arcane going on here. Might be worth further study. I, I might just get her, Ray, guys. <laughs> I'm like right next to her. <laughs> Let me try this. Ma'am, uh, I know you're looking for your friend, Meg, but perhaps you we know the way out. Would you like to go upstairs and perhaps have something to eat? Uh, well, you if, know, you, if you could vouch for my protection, of, I, I would. I would very much like that. Thank you. What a kind gentleman you are. Yeah, we could. We could get you out of here. No problem. We know the way. I've been uh, careful maps. You know, we could walk right out and uh, you know have lunch. Do you have a camp nearby, though? Do that you would like to stop at first? Well, well, where I reside is 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 further down below. I'm afraid I was only coming up here to get some light and actually searched to see if perhaps Meg had come this way. Alas, it doesn't seem to be the case. But um, I do You've remember, though, that yes, the entrance is quite near here. If, if you're willing to take me out, I would be, I would be much obliged. I wouldn't. I would love to have a warm meal Does for once. Satchels with her or anything, John? Uh, she has this wicker basket that's next to her that's filled with roots and stuff like that. Um, Nothing small book sized? Uh, no, but she does have like, she's very bulky in like, her robes. Like, there's lots of places to hide things. Gotcha. Yeah, uh, come on. This way, let's go have some tea. Okay, so you're going to lead her back out? Get along, Pim. <laughs> All right, so. Yeah, I mean, let's. let's... Let's go up and see if we can get her out of the grotto. All right, turn goes by. So we'll just backtrack. Are you going to hopefully not any any drunken goblins and just leave? Okay, so are you going to? <laughs> you're basically going along uh, paths that you already know. So you have the choice now of either retreating at um, uh, double your normal speed, in which case you're not actually taking care, but you can leave. Um, you can leave quicker, or you can move at your normal dungeon pace. Normal well, dungeon pace, please. Yeah, we don't want to encounter normal. the goblins unexpectedly, you know, whatever. Okay. Us? Okay. All right, so, so yeah. We go back to the eyeball room, we go back to the skull room, we go back to the red room, we follow the bent corridor, and we go up the stairs. All right, and your... Anyone else concerned this is just a little too easy, like... <laughs> your, your explanation... I mean, <laughs> Your exploration rate is 60, is that correct? E yep. Yes, it is. All right. I mean, I'm ready for the getter ray part. You know, I've got my flanged mace. So I would hit her in the back of the head. Of <laughs> okay, so what is your marching order as you're retreating? Uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll put her arm on my elbow, you know, and I'll chat with her and kind of walk with her on the way out, you know, and... Okay, what's uh, the marching right ahead of me with the torch. It's also possible she's just a nice lady, by the way. Yeah, I don't really want to hit her on the I, head. I need yet. another marching order. 
<laughs> yeah, okay, so Pim. Halifax first. Okay, Halifax. You want, you want me right? Okay, I'll be right in front. Like So Pim with the torch, me. Uh, I'm going to be behind... I'll be in the back, ready to cast silence if I need to. Basically, yeah. so I'm gonna be I'm gonna be in the back of the marching order. Argus and Marjoram are walking together. You know, well, they're there, Miss. You know, I'll get you out of here, no problem. You know. Okay, but I need to. Okay, so I want to do this. Well, let's yeah. let's let's do a caller. You guys discuss amongst each other, and then the caller tell me what the marching order is. Okay. We've hey, got the go caller. We've got David in the back, and I think Alfric, right in front of him. And then me and Marjoram, mm -hmm. and then you want to you want Pim in front of you, Halifax? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's Pim so up for that. Why doesn't Pim bring up the rear? We need the light ahead of us to make sure we don't run into goblins, not the light behind us. That's okay. what I was thinking. So I think you should be right in front of Hal of Pim because I don't think he wants to go first. You but... want to put him right in front of her? Halifax, Pim, yeah. Argus, Alfrek, Quillum. Yes. Okay. Cool. Uh, okay. So you uh, you slowly make your way back, carefully, carefully. She's grateful to take your arm, um, and uh, she, as you as you're making your way back through the chambers, um, uh, she's kind of chatting happily with you, Argus, and she keeps looking back over her shoulder, um, over at uh, Gwillem in the back, and she's like, "I just want to have a word with the with the friar. It's been so long since I've had a talk with the man of the cloth. Do you mind, dearie?" Well, uh, not at all, but wouldn't you be more comfortable, uh, you know, <laughs> upstairs with a cup of tea before you have such a serious conversation? Well, just on the way back, of course. We can keep moving. And she sort of, dis she disentangles herself from you, like, politely. It's not, like, she doesn't think you smell or anything like that. She just wants to have yeah, a word yeah, with Willem. I mean, he Where does. are we at that point? Are uh, we already in the red room? Yeah, we'll say you're in the red room, yeah. Okay, so I'll just hang back and let Gwillem and her... She gets to Gwillem. I'll get behind them. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. So she's uh, she's with me. Uh, I right. can take her arm and arm as well. Yeah. Okay. So as you as you kind of switch this position and awkwardly like maintain <laughs> step behind her in Gwillem, you can see that there is a flash of annoyance in her eyes as you make that move, Argus. But she doesn't say anything. But you do notice it. She quickly covers it up though and takes Gwillem's arm. She's like. Um, young brother, you must be so cold. Why are you not wearing any clothes? <laughs> <laughs> and the pallor of your skin. I, I i don't mean to be rude, Friar, but you you, you don't look healthy. Uh, I, I'm so unhealthy that my camera has blurred, in fact. Um, <laughs> well, a little bit dramatic. That's her view of you with her owlish eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Link, link, link. Uh, um... <laughs> Uh, 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 dearest, unfortunately, I took a nice splash within the refreshing waters of your grotto and didn't think to take my robes off first, so they are drying in the sun above. Uh, and in this, is... in your skin, in your, in your hair, what, what, what happened? And she's sort of like gently kind of touching your, your back and sure. the back of your head. Um, I, I, I get down to a whisper so that only she and I could hear each other. Mm -hmm. Not the party. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I say, I drink from a fey fountain. And I bet you know exactly what that is, don't you, my dear? <laughs> well, I've, that, that was probably, I, I don't know if I've encountered one myself, but if I should, <laughs> I should not have drank from it. You Four. foolish boy. He sort of, of course, pats you on course. the side of the cheek. Um, where are we at this point? <laughs> you're moving through this color room. What are you so worried about? I don't know. You're traveling back. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna <laughs> oh, I don't know if I should do it now. Right? No, I don't want to tank the party. Well, I'll just keep. I'll say very well. We'll keep talking. I want to ask her about arcane stuff, but I'm afraid she's gonna make flight if we we pry too much. Okay. Well, so, well, what, tell tell me more about your life, dear. As we walk, tell oh. me about your home down below. You've 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 roosted. Uh, <sighs> It's just a horrible place. There's many interesting sights down there, but I, I crave the sunlight. I really do. I can't wait for this meal. It's going to be very fine with such fine company. Isn't that right, Argus? And she kind of looks over her shoulder at you. Oh, it's... the finest. We have multiple cookpots. She 
She she pets, she pats Gwilym and she's like, "This is very nice talking to you, Gwilym. I think I'm going to take Argus's arm once again to help me out through these rough patches here." She drops back with Argus once again. <laughs> oh, I'll uh, I'll uh, so I'll step up and I'll hold out my arm and I'll I'll sort of push Gwilym to the side. Incidentally, <laughs> kind of push him behind me. And says, "You're quite right, my dear. Quite right. He's uh, okay. he's far too." Uh, uh, whatever it is, he is. Sure, I'm much better company. Sure. Okay. All right. So, um, you guys are entering the um the purple and orange phasing corridor, right? That leads out from okay. the scarlet pepperel room into the um the pool. Okay. Um, okay. as you enter that corridor, you can hear way off in the distance, somewhere to the east, you hear a high pitched goblin scream of agony. Cut short. Right. Oh man, they touched the statue. Um, okay. Followed, followed by some sort sort of insane mixture of of gibbering and squealing that sounds not of this earth. Some something awful that sort of uh, attacks your mind. It seems uh, completely unholy and not of this earth, um, coming from the east as well. Yeah, that, have that, you ever heard? In, sorry, that dwindles away um, quietly. Uh, I'm gonna interject and say, "Oh my! What was that? Uh, uh, some unearthly owl." Uh, as a resident, this is a weirdly formal way of asking, but what was that, lady? <laughs> <laughs> um, you notice as you turn, as you, all of you guys whip around to look at that voice, yeah. you notice that she has a delayed reaction to it. Like she doesn't seem mm -hmm. to take notice, and then when she notices you all reacting to it, she like reacts. She's like, "Oh, okay. I, I don't know." What that is? That sounded horrible. I'm sure it's nothing I've encountered down here. Uh, hold up. Let's all bunker down for a second. Yeah. Well, I think we should move. We should move quickly to. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm like hustling her up the stairs. Like, okay, go, 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 go. Yes, go. yes. But, the fast. Okay, but like, what if? Uh, I don't know. What if she's like trapped in this grotto by some magic seal and we're just walking her the fuck out, man. I'm, I don't know. <laughs> like, like, I have my mind spinning right now and she does not care about the death dealers downstairs and she's very pleased to be going up and if you actually think she's an evil sorceress, that seems a little spooky. <laughs> That's the point. The point is getting paid, man. I, all right. You know? All right, uh, baby. All right, I so would like to go over towards that doorway where the horrible sound came from mm -hmm. and peek around it. Into, so into the room with this Back space. into the red room, basically, is what you're saying. I, I'm saying you heard this, like, way off in the distance. Oh. Like, okay. uh, like in some right. formless no, space keep... out in the east. Yeah. yeah I think we keep yeah, going. I, I say we keep going. Uh, I, you know, I'll just say to her, uh, Marjoram, I think that's the sort of reason why we're going up the stairs and not back that way. Let's just... Hustle the things along here a little bit, please. Okay. And so, uh, yes, escort uh, her up, the, uh, up so, the stairs. So you you enter the the chamber where the um where the pool is, yep. and you can see that um, there are there are three different goblins. Okay, all uh, differing, and they've got like a couple. Like one has like the the super pointed boots that are much longer than its actual foot, right? That sort of yeah, thing, you well, know. Yep. Um, one has like a, a nose that actually droops all the way down, like elephantine, down to his crotch, just sort of sways back and forth. Um, all with like random pieces of, of of um of armor on them, and they've all got little um uh what do you call them um <laughs> uh what's what are they called? I can't remember the term. Like little um uh, 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 gas canister pusher thingies. What do you call them? Like <laughs> oh, like those spray cans. Yeah, spray oh. cans. For bugs. Oh, they're shooting the sprites. Yes. With the insecticide. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly what they're doing. So, if anyone who's seen Labyrinth, um, uh, Hoggle was doing this whenever uh, yeah. Jennifer Connelly first met him. But they they are gleefully doing the same thing where they are like jumping around. They're like, Fsk! and like the sprite just goes ear and hits the ground, ear <laughs> sploosh into the water. And like some of them are like sort of like whizzing around, like unhappy, and um, some of them are uh, quickly like whizzing around and like grabbing handfuls of that of that bubble moss. And chewing it and like diving into the water to like escape, and the goblins are like hopping around trying and like gleefully like uh, spraying these guys. Um, and they see you and they're like ah, and they, their the guns the the guns go like flying up in the air and drop down onto the ground and they um and uh, they just sort of like they go back up against the water and they're like ah, and they they look a little bit terrified. 
I just wave to them. Hey, boys. <laughs> and they say, and they say, oh, don't, don't mind them. They're they're basically harmless. They keep to themselves. They're uh, what what was it, dears? Your 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 uh, your master died recently. Is that what it was? What was his name? Greg, old Greg, right? Greg. And, and you you see them, and they they look at each other, and they look over at at you guys, and you see that all of their eyes in fear are looking only at her. They don't care that you're that you're there. Yeah, and they're like yeah. quaking in fear. She's like, "Okay, let's go, let's go up, up quickly before that thing catches up with us, whatever it is out east." Goodbye, dearies. Uh, goodbye, and she like waves to the. I think Willem is really onto something here. <laughs> um, ho- hold up, sorry. Um, I realized. Oh, I left something in the chamber. <laughs> Can we just it's, hold up one not moment, the time, everyone? brother? Now that the, friends, August, dear, you. Tell your friend here. There's really no time. Oh no, no, we we don't want to leave anything behind. Uh, I mean, <laughs> this is a pretty safe room to be in, even with these foolish goblins here. Uh, you know, and I'm like jerking my thumb at them. Um, <laughs> it won't take but a moment. Uh, what 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 was it you needed to do, Gwilym? I misplaced uh oh my robes i left them yes my robes they're just oh you're so driving i wouldn't want to uh be profane uh in the eyes of of uh, our lord above ground as it were you know the sun sun didn't shine upon (laughs) these cheeks she looks at you Uh, helplessly like did did you not hear what i just heard there's something awful something demonic down there to the east it could come upon us at any time but right here, um, I can see the sunlight. You need you needn't worry yourselves. We're very strong, very strong indeed. We can defend ourselves against anything. Well, at all, gentlemen, you've might... been you've been so kind to take me to this point, but I must say, I feel like I'm going. I think I'm just going to go up myself. I there's just, you know, we, there are clothes. As far as I know, the clothes are still a thing that is can be bought and made up on the in the overworld. You would. Well, I, uh, I'm, I'm going up. Her, I'm going up. Can I ask her a question really quick before she runs up there? Yeah. We actually were thinking about trying to find some friends of ours that came down here. There's we three knights. Friends too. The, three knights from the town of Prigwart, and their names are. <laughs> Gestevin, Kestifer, <laughs> and the names that we remember. Such good note taker you are. Yeah. <laughs> and, Beth, and Beth Milder. You haven't seen them anywhere, have you? Their their figurines look like this. Let me show her the figurines. Oh yeah, Halifax takes them out. Uh, she, she says, "Oh, no, I don't. Can't say I have." You notice before she does so that um, uh, because you're wary, looking in her eyes, that um, her eyes harden a little bit at the mention of the names of those knights. Before she quickly covers it up. Uh, do we want to like? Uh, uh, oh, didn't you? Enough conversation. Alfred, Alfred you had you had a, a statuette of our dear friend here as well, did you not? Of her. Yeah, I already showed it to her. There are two statues of her. You've showed yes, her one. Yes, there are two. Could you could you hand me one, dear? Yep, I give him the one I've got. I throw it on the ground and break it. <laughs> what, what, what did you do that for? I it's uh, it's just sacrilege, you know, uh, idols, as it were. You are the Just strangest people I have ever met. I, I, I find myself losing my appetite, but my thirst for sunlight has not been quenched. So up I go. Enough um, with you then. And she she starts to right. make her way up the stage. Right. Get her way. Get her. Get her, Argus. She's not running, but okay. she, she's making her way no, up the stairs. I'm just, I, the, the jig is up. Look, I'm going to say, okay, my dear. Let us be honest. We have heard of someone with your exact description doing very nefarious things down here. And you nefarious. seem quite nice. I am nice. Quite I'm nice. Not nefarious. And so, <laughs> who are we to believe if uh, uh, you remain very elusive to our questioning? Uh, and yet, the goblins cower in your presence. Well, I, they you, are you, they are cowardly creatures by nature. Of course. Why am I explaining myself to you? If is, anyone has uh, been evasive, it has been you for <laughs> acting very strangely, always making sure that dear, someone is dear, watching me from the back. 
It's you just... live in these chambers and you're only now afraid of what may reside in them with you. This seems a bit uh, insincere. Now, I am not saying the accusations leveled towards you are correct, but I would like to talk honestly with each other rather than talking past each other. Let us talk honestly. You are not my caretakers. I can take <laughs> care of myself. I thank you for the service that you have performed up to this point. But now I see the exit in front of me, mere steps away, and I hold no ill will towards you. I wish you the very best, should you wish to join me up here or to continue your delve down below. I am going to go up, and I am going to go about my way. Um, listen, I have uh, done no, nothing I, I think, I, I think that your way is going to be um, our way. Um, and he, he'll like reach out and away from him. He's gonna reach out and uh, 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 take her arm that's holding the uh, staff, uh -huh. and he's gonna try to take the take the. I staff hope away. we don't. Oh, like, take the staff. Oh, I, feel, I feel so bad about this. <laughs> she, she smiles when you first said when away. you first start like saying like you know I, I think our paths are going to be together and then. And then her eyes widen in alarm and surprise as like you actually make to forcefully take the staff from her, um, and mm -hmm. she of course will resist. Um, her eyes widen and her mouth like sets like a firm line, and um, and uh, like her eyes turn to like a hard, hard. Um, uh, what am I trying to say? Like uh, like you know, there's no dreaminess at all anymore. It's like like she focuses uh -huh. right in on you, and she's just looking death right at you as you attempt to take her staff away from her. Um, so. I'm gonna cast silence. <laughs> um, you were suspicious. She she certainly is not like you're not like lunging at her, right? So there's it's not sure. like um she's surprised. So um, basically um, entering into combat here. So we're going to declare actions first. Um, so are you going to? Uh, is there going to be any spell casting going on? Oh yeah. Silence. Silence. <laughs> yeah. I'll cast light on her face. Uh, can you, uh, Mike, can that spell be reversed to be darkness? She's a prismist. Don't add light to her. She, she, he has to memorize it as that. Okay. I was thinking if we could darken things, she would not have light to yeah, work. Well, so, well, she seems anxious. So she is slightly up above you because she is up the steps a little bit. Okay. Right. Um, Halifax is standing between you and her. Right. Um, and you guys are all at the base of the steps. Uh, except for Halifax, who's maybe like one step up, right? Um, so Gwilym and Elfric are back and are going to be casting their own spells. Silence and light is what I'm hearing, right? Okay. Uh, she is uh, going to attempt to retaliate against Halifax directly in melee. Oh. All right. Uh, let's roll for initiative. Hold on one second before we do. Yes, yeah, so there movements now to the John. I'm confused. What? I don't want to just stand where I am when I'm casting my spell. I want to be able to move away from. You can't when people. you're casting a spell. The only thing you can do is cast a spell. Oh, okay, all right. Sweet. Who's rolling initiative, bitches? I'll, I'll do, do it. it. I, I I grab the. Oh yeah, that's true. You it. started it. You do it. I Suck it, it, other side. Ah. Uh, the way the middle of Okay. Yes. I mean, she got a six. What am I going to do? Yeah. Roll a six. Okay. Roll a seven. So yeah. she, um, so you're all, you're expecting her to like, you know, cause some sort of magical havoc, right? Against Halifax. What actually happens though, is that um, with the other hand that is, um, uh, that is free, that is not holding the staff that's contending with Halifax, that hand actually grows these long claws. Her hands actually, the fingers actually turn like a grayish tone. And actually elongate into like a long, long claws, and those actually rake directly at Halifax. And she snarls a bestial, very non human like snarl yeah. um, Great. as she uh, lunges into him. We've and, got a mimic <laughs> of sorts, or, or a doppelganger, or something yeah. else. That's, yeah, exactly. That's um, why there were two of them. AC 18. Uh, I have a, an AC 19 with my shield. Motherfucker. Yes. All right. Uh, if you are wielding the shield, that means that you were and you were grabbing the staff. That means you have no weapon in hand. Just realize, okay? Uh, this is this is correct. Okay, so she um, she rakes at you, and you bring up your shield, and it screeches across the metal of the shield as she howls at you with anger and frustration. Um, 
and that was its turn. Okay, so now it is um, your guy's turn. All so right, it'll I'm be. Going to, uh... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, let, let me just parse it for myself real quick before we get to it. So it the... would be. Um, there's no one's. No one's using missiles, right? So it would be. Right. Um, it would be movement, uh, missile, spell casting, melee. Right. So it would be spells first. For spells go off. Go ahead, David. Do you need us to uh, declare? I though, think you. I think you should go first, Mike, because the, mine it, it, is it. going to make it so you can't cast a spell if you are 15 feet of this person. So okay. Fire and then I'll fire. <laughs> so John, she needs to make a save versus spell. I think. Okay. Is that true? What does light do? Um, do, 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 do? I have it pulled up somewhere. Um, I lost my... It's somewhere buried on my desktop. Hold on a sec. Okay. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. David, do you want to go while I do this? Saving throw versus spells. Okay, I got it. Yeah, it's just a saving throw versus spell, and I. The only thing I wasn't sure is whether or not she took a minus two because I'm casting it at her. But no. I don't think she does. No, she doesn't. Uh, okay, so that spell is okay. She actually fails. And okay. So. So I cast it directly at her. And she is blinded and cannot target anyone. Yeah. All right. So she's blinded. So she shrieks back as like you're like. And like your light goes blazing forth. All of you guys are amazed. Probably none more so than Gwilym, as Gwilym's like, I thought I was the only one who could do that. <laughs> it's it's, def it's definitely like a different tone to the spell than Gwilym's, right? Gwilym's is much sure. more of like a holy light, and Alphrex is like arcane, just like, <laughs> you know, he's like low pan from Big Trouble Little China, right? <laughs> just, um, and uh, it uh, blazes forth, and she's like, ah! and she like pulls back, with like her, um, uh, her her staff actually drops to the ground, clatters on the on on the um, on the stairs, tink, 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 and falls at the feet of um, Argus and uh, probably Argus actually uh, past Halifax, and she holds up both of her clawed hands in front of her face. You can see that her face, like this pudgy sort of middle aged wrinkled face, sort of um, morphs into like this long gray alien-like figure and then quickly yeah. m morphs back again to the woman and back and forth and phases back and forth in, in the blinding light of this as she screams in agony and, and fear. All right. Then Gwilym quickly Another shuts that up. Another spell. Another save? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, made that one. Okay. So it is not cast upon her, but it is still cast in 15-foot radius where she stands. So she can move out of that. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, got it. And yeah. it will not follow her, but that area is still silent. Understood. Okay, so you plop it right down in the middle of the stairway. So she's like, ah! quiet. Right. Everything everything comes real quiet. Um, then it would be um, Argus and Halifax, I'm assuming. Well, Argus, you're not actually in melee, so you can move up there if you like. Yep. I so intend. To uh... can can we coordinate a little bit? Yeah, because of course you can. One yeah. of the things that uh, Halifax would want to do, because he's been in this situation before, where the thing can't cast spells, he doesn't want her to go. He's kind of grabbed onto her. Is ready? Can he like uh, you know tackle her to the ground? Uh, her yeah, to you're make on. It easier easier for Argus to come up and attack. Yeah, you, it's on the stairway once again. But yeah, you could do you could do that. Yeah, absolutely. So just make a melee attack. You can use your strength bonus. Okay, uh, that'll be a plus one. Her AC is 14. Oh, uh, it's a 13. A 13. Uh, you know what, I'll give it to you because I don't think that she's going to be able to fully defend herself because of the shock of the light. Okay. Um, so I, it, that would at least give her like a minus one penalty, I think. So, um, so yeah, you're able to like grab onto her as she's flailing around. Argus, get her! You bear to the ground. All right, Argus. Uh, you know, uh, I guess he couldn't hear that. That's true, actually. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, Argus quickly picks his, uh, you know, raises his shield and spear and leaps in uh, to stab her right in her important okay, now, organ. Before you do, before you do, be yeah. aware that it's it's sort of like a it's a narrow 
area on this stairway, right? Less than five feet wide. Halifax uh -huh. and um, the and Marjoram are sort of like all in mass, like on that thing. So being able to actually target Marjoram specifically is a little bit more difficult. So I'm going to say this. If you miss um, the AC by five or more, you're going to hit Halifax instead. Uh, you're aware of this before uh, you strike. Yeah, I mean, Go Halifax, it, uh, Halifax made this bed. He's going to have to bleed to death in it, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> or just hit her. Or just hit her. Oh, 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 no. oh, oh. <laughs> You're right. What was I thinking? Don't roll yeah, it that's up. never going to happen. What'd you get? All right. So I'm just going to roll a 20-sided a die here and hope that I don't uh, stab uh, Halifax, even though I know that's what's going to happen. <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> oh. Amazing. Damn it. For those listening to the podcast, uh, Ted rolled a four. <laughs> Which is definitely more I than five. Yeah. All right. So you're like, At least you uh, can't uh, hear uh, me scream in disappointment. Well, yeah. That's I a mean, good thing. Yeah. Now, so, I mean, out of curiosity, John, like, mm -hmm. yes, I totally failed to hit whatever this thing is. Mm -hmm. And I hit an armored knight with my spear. Mm hmm. Does that roll actually mean I've penetrated his armor class? Uh, yeah, I'm just I'm ruling it like if you miss if okay. you miss him that. But but that said, Halifax, you can use your um, shield shall be broken thing if you'd like to. Uh, actually, I, I got spares on the mule upstairs, man. I I think her stuff is worse. I'll take your hit. You're gonna take it, yeah, back, dude. Yeah. Right. All right, Argus you Gordon. Want back to the can't attack. She's blind. Oh. What'd you get for... Okay. I okay, haven't rolled okay. yet. What, what are you doing, Matt? Okay, if she really can't attack because she's blind, he would know that. Okay. Yeah. He'll take, the, he'll take it on the shield. So basically, I split your shield in half instead of stabbing you. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. Right. So you get the shield up in, in time to, because you see it come here. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> in it. Um, just, well, he just he, as they're rolling down, I time my spare spear badly, and I just hit the shield and knock it right off his arm. And, there you go. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, cool. okay. Right. So Halifax, you're two uh, AC lower. You've lost your shield, so make sure you mark it off. Uh, that that may affect your um, speed. Remember, because that shield is like one slot, I believe. I am. I am now still definitively the worst fighter ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cool, cool scene, though. <laughs> it goes careening into the water, you know? <laughs> All right, that's the end of the round. So, uh, top of the round, any spells? Uh, I'm going to hit her with my stick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ret retreats from melee for Argus and Halifax. Uh, I could cast protection from evil. No. no I don't I'm think gonna... it's worth it. I think I'm just going to... I'm going to stay in melee. So, there, you cannot... Um, for Elfric and Gwillem, there is no room for you to actually engage in melee with it because of the fact that they're on this narrow stairway. So if there's something else you want to do, you got to let me know. I'm going to keep an eye on the... What are the goblins doing right now? Uh, the goblins are basically have, like... We're sort of, at the time, when you were still discussing with her, we're sort of, like, edging around <laughs> and sure. trying to get through that eastern corridor. And so they're, like, bolting the bolting to the eastern corridor. Speak, speaking of, I'm, I'm uh, being incredibly dense... Brigan is standing at the top of these stairs watching this happen, and Pim is sitting here with us. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Pim's so, not hired to fight. No, but Brigan would probably... Brigan have not interceded at this point? That's, it occurs to me that we're she's your character. You've, she, of so course, gonna, 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 I know, I know, I know. I know. It's, it's yeah. So I'm going to say, Brigan! <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and encourage her to uh, shoot some arrows. Uh, okay, cool. So I'll, I'll, I should telegraph what she's what what Marjorie was planning to do. She's planning to basically dis dis. She's going to do a full retreat, blind. Yeah. She's going to disengage uh, uh, from Argus and Halifax. She's going to try to scramble up up the stairways um, and try to yeah. escape. Is basically what she's going to do. Um, is she, is she able to do that with Halifax grabbing onto her? She's going to try. Oh, so it's going to be like a I'm, I'm giving you a general sense of what she plans to do, and then be, um, okay. and then you guys can sort of determine what you guys plan to do. Yeah, and I think right. I think my how, mine would be to not let her do that. In, in right. fact, I, I don't know if there's a way to do this, but you know, if we're on these stairs, kind of, and he's grabbed her, kind of, almost like judo, roll back down the stairs and throw her back down. 
Okay, cool. Anyways, but before we roll initiative, I mean, so Argus and Halifax are staying there. Al freaking Wilm, are you using spells or not? No. Okay. All right. So let's roll. I'm not. I'm gonna keep an eye on the corridor, John, and and wait for like someone to come help her or whatever. You know. Yeah. All right, yeah, we're, we're Bra- getting. Bragan we're, is going on. to engage. Hold on, though. Sorry. We're we're kind of getting out of like what we need to have is the phased yep. amount of combat. So what basically happens yep. here is all I need to know before we roll initiative mm-hmm. is melee movement and spell casting, right? So we know that there's no melee movement. We know that there's no spell casting going on. Then right. what we're going to do is we're going to roll initiative. When we yep. roll initiative, to determine who wins and who loses. Then that determines how we actually telegraph um, what our declared actions are going to be, and then we move through them by phases. Okay, including so ranged. I thought we had to declare ranged. Nope, we don't. Okay. Yeah. It just happens. Right? Melee movement and spells only before initiative. Okay, so let's roll for initiative. Yeah. I'll, I'll roll. Suck it. Time. Yeah. Oh, nah. there you go. What? Okay. Oh. All right. So because uh, you guys because you guys lost initiative, you have to declare basically what you're planning to do first. Now, we've already sort of gone through this, but I'm just telling you for future reference. Sure. Okay. Um, so that I, as the monsters, can react to what you're doing because I'm faster than you are. Right. Right. Um, but that said, she is blind, um, and so you can. I can already telegraph what she's going to be doing, so it's not a big deal. So, she does get to act first, though. So she's going to attempt to disengage from you, um, Halifax, and, and beat ass. So, um, she can't technically target anybody. Like she can't attack anyone, but she's definitely going to do a melee attack against you, Halifax, purely not to do damage, but just to break away from you. She can certainly do that when she's blind, right? Yeah, because she can feel you all over her, right? So, yeah. that's dirty. Okay. <laughs> all right. So you are now at AC seventeen, correct? Uh, this is this is true. Oh, and she got it. Damn. All right. A lot of fingers. All right. So she slithers out um, abnormally dexter- uh, dexterously, um, despite her bulk, um, and she uh, she slithers out of your grasp, and she is going to book it as fast as she can up there. Now, she had to use part of her action to disengage her, so I'm not going to give her her full movement rate, but um, she's going to move her encounter movement rate, which is 30. Um, so mm-hmm. let me just take a look at the map real quick. That'll probably do it, to, at least yeah. to the top of the stairs. That'll get her up Bregan. to the lip. So she's going to basically run straight into Bregan. Yes. Okay. Um, and... Yeah, that's what she's going to do. So she's totally blind, right? Like, she's able to feel her way up the stairs, but she's just like... <gasps> And she's running, like, bolting up the stairs. And uh, and now it's your guy's turn. Um, so what do you guys plan to do? So I'm going to yell something to Bregan, but I don't know if I have the, like, ability to convince her to do it. I mean, that's what we hired Bregan for, was to fight. Right. I mean, my, my thought is to have Bregan literally charge her to the side into the water. Yeah, just say, scream, don't look well. Just... Just yeah, knock her into the water. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I mean, I'm literally, that's what else I can do. So I'm, I'm literally going to yell, like, you know, uh, shove her into the to the water, however you, however you can, right? Yeah. Got I can grapple. Yeah. Okay. And my uh, my intention would be to uh, uh, pursue and keep up with her. I don't I don't know if I can move my full encounter speed and attack at the end of it you can yeah you can move your encounter okay. yeah which is what 60 20. probably 20 for you uh, unless it's actually like, dropping the shield might mean you I'm, bump into it the says 30 I'm at, at 30 on encounter yeah 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 30 okay yeah so you'll be able to get up to her yeah all right i will i shall get up up there and, and the rest of you what um, are you doing well um what i think i'm going to do is since i don't think i can get to the top of the stairs while he's running up the stairs, I'm going to throw my spear at her. Okay. And then run up after Halifax while I'm getting my mace out. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Alfred? I'm going to retrieve the staff. Get the staff. Okay, cool. And Guilm, you're just shouting out at Bregan, right? I'm going to shout and, like, with that in mind, I'm going to... I think this, God, this is chaotic. I'm going to run back down towards the mouth of the pool mm-hmm. where I'm telling Bregan to push her. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go, Shove it all and just turn. <laughs> where are you going, though? I'm sorry. She's like, running up the steps. I know, I know where the she's going. Where, <laughs> yeah, where are you going? I'm pivoting and going back down so that if Bregan is successful at, like... You're not on the stairs. Yeah, you're not on the stairs. You're free roaming right there at the around the... You're on the footprint of the grotto. Yeah. <laughs> 
You can go wherever you want. Yeah. You're then, not I'm the saying, then I'm saying there. I'm confused. I thought we all were halfway up the stairs when this, this occurred. Oh, man. This whole thing just... happened at the base of the stairs. The base. And then they started going up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. It's you're, fine. You're yeah, safe. You're safe. Either. Either. I'm there. I'm ready. <laughs> Okay, cool. Well, you're basically, you're waiting for wherever Bregan knocks her down, you'll yes. be able to pounce on her. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yes, so, um, Halifax uh, uh, barrels up the stairways and in pursuit of her as she slips out of his grasp. Elfric uh, backs away and snatches up the staff. Um, it's cool to the touch, Elfric, but does not appear to, um, to uh, you know, infuse you with any sort of power that you're aware of. Um, <laughs> but you've got it in hand. Um, cool. And then uh, uh, Argus has the missile attack with the spear throw. As it goes launching yep. over Halifax's shoulder, go for it. AC fourteen. Actually, I'll get, make it AC twelve because she's blind. Yes, I did a thing. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Oh, I kind of did a thing. How much? Well, I hit her for a point of damage. Maybe she deflates. One point. Yeah. Okay. All right, so yeah, it, it basically wings her as she goes spinning around, but doesn't appear to do too much. Um, okay. uh, then um, Halifax is going to reach her and grab onto her at the same time that Bregan is going to attempt to follow Gwilm's orders, orders and shove her over. So you guys might want to coordinate between the two of you <laughs> as to what, what's going to happen here. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll swing first, and then you shove her down. Okay, so you're not going to grab her, Halifax. You're actually attacking. Okay, got it. That makes it easy. Okay. Okay. Uh, I shall. Uh, uh, the uh, the blade of a search eyed. Yes. Sees Shing. the light of day. Nice. He bravely swings. Brave, brave, Sir Halifax. Uh, I think that's a hit. That would be that is a, a hit. seventeen to hit. Palpable. Um. And uh, he shall roll uh, the d8. Uh, this will be d8 plus one. Uh, actually, d8 plus two. Because of his uh, strength plus the magic of the blade. Daniel, my sweet blade. Uh, that will be a six total. Six total, nice. All right, so that was a... Uh, yeah, so uh, Argus's spear wings her around directly into your blade as it comes crashing down on her, and uh, it opens her up. Um, you can see now that her form, her entire form is shifting um, rapidly between some sort of um, uh, thin alien form and the pudgy woman. Um, something is not right, obviously. You did six total? Six total. Yeah. Uh, she is howling in pain at the same time that Bregan barrels into her. Guillaume, you want to roll for Bregan? we got to make sure to save her head, dude, because it's going to light spell on it for like nine more turns. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Clash so, with the Titans, that stuff, man. Get mm -hmm. my spearhead. So, uh, you want to just do an attack roll yep. for Brigham? Yeah. Yep. All right. I'm imagining, like, football style, just like shoulder, <laughs> like over the side, both of them kind of thing is what she's sure, going yeah. for. You can, you can add her strength bonus if she's got one. Okay. That is a. Oh, yeah. that's an eight. It's a seven plus one. That's an eight. Yeah, not going to do it, unfortunately. So she she tries to barrel into her, but she's like uh, spiraling all around. And um, perhaps like Halifax's blow actually calls her to double over, which causes Bregan to mistime her push. And Bregan herself is like, whoa, 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 whoa. As she herself whoa. is actually like right on the lip and manages to catch herself, though, in the nick of time. Okay. So um, Bregan and Halifax are now both engaged with her up at the top. So just to give you geographically right. So 30 feet up. The stairway at the very lip of the cave in the daylight, Halifax and Bregan are right on top of her. All right, right. She's spiraling around. She can't even attack. Argus, you're I'm sort of be close behind. Right, you're close behind. Yeah, you're like halfway up the steps, and you just chuck your yeah. spear. Um, and Alfred and Willem are basically standing close together, all the way back down at the lip of the pool, um, watching right. the the goings on up above them and seeing the goblins retreat back down the eastern corridor. Dead sprites. Popcorn, dude. Yeah. Every once in a popcorn. while, you step on a dead sprite, causing little sprite guts to go spurting out. Oh, <laughs> Just to add that on. <laughs> See, now you just make us feel bad. <laughs> yeah. Bro. All right. Jeez. That's the end of round two. Uh, declaring spells and melee. Spells and melee retreat. Melee. Never retreat. I, I Never surrender. Stay, no retreat. Stay within melee. Okay, cool. Um, 
uh, she's not going to cast any spells, and but she is going to uh, attempt to retreat. Um, in fact, I am going to not only is she going to retreat, but I'm going to have her roll morale as well. Um, that is what Yay. I'm declaring. So let's roll for initiative, shall we? Oh, the who's got have, this one? The tables have turned for yours truly. I rolled a one. There you go. I'll do it. I'll do it. All right. Four. Four. You guys win. So um, my intent is to get the hell away. She's going to make a run for um, for the uh, the Fog Lake Basin walls as quickly as she can and try to find a pathway up and into the forest. All right. My intent is to beat her with my mace. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, Bregan is our hunter, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, here's what I here, here's what I want to do, if 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 we can work this out, stick get her help or get his help to uh, with his bow, like hold out his bow to trip this thing, so I can shove it down the thirty feet with some assistance from that bow being tangled around tangled around the feet. So like right. stick it. Yeah. Bregan's a girl, by the way. Trip. Oh, okay. I, yeah. I, I didn't know the pronouns. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so she could stick the bow down by their legs to tangle them up, and I'll push them over. Willem, you're and playing Bregan, so feet. you have the conversation with you know what I mean. You, like that, it's not you're not talking it right. You understand, David? That he's not. No, talking no, about... I, I understand. I was just letting letting yeah. uh, Halifax yeah. talk. No, I, I think a coordinated trip is a great idea because Bregan is uh, again going to try to uh, shove and or help you shove this thing over the side. So. Uh, I can do like a sweep or some sort of like, you know, between the legs thing. If it's reasonable mechanically that that would give you a bonus. Really if it weird. is not, then we should both try, right? Like, so the question is, is it more, let's just do, let's do it for the flavor of it. Yeah. Let's, let's come in. It would be a normal like leg sweep. It, it, okay. Let's say this. It's, you're using a bow in an improper manner. Yeah. So it would be an improvised weapon for what you're attempting to do. So it would be a minus four to attack. However, she already has. She does have a penalty to her AC already from being blind. So why wouldn't I just tackle instead? Honestly, like in terms of the math, it would make more sense for Bregan to just try to tackle. Be because yeah, there is a, there is a chance that should you tackle, that you will both go over the edge. Well, uh, I, I, I don't have a pro. I, yeah, it's fine. Sorry. Why not just kill her? Just hit that's, her with weapons. We're not going to be able to kill her before she she flees into the woods, and she knows what you and I look like. And oh, now we're gonna have, we're gonna we're gonna have a doppelganger around the dolmen wood that looks like us killing people. <laughs> she's glowing. She's not going anywhere. She's gonna hit a tree. Like yeah. I'm like, she can't get to the forest, man. She cannot see anything. How did she run up a stairwell if she she's can't? If she can't hand her hand up a stairwell. Yeah, she basically walked her way up there. Just kill her. But but you but, know what? But you're right. You're, but you're right. She 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 is totally blind, and she she has no idea where she's going. Now that she's in an open space, like there's, you know, yeah, she's, she's got no no orientation. No guide. Yes. David, orientation. maybe instead of tackling her, just give her the boot. Give her Das boot and just boot her over the edge so that you don't fall over the edge too. I mean, either way, it's a, it's an attack roll. There's no there's no difference in, in the in the mechanism. So I'll I'll kick her again and try to kick her back. Uh, I'm not going to be able to attack her without dropping my bow as Bregan, pulling out a weapon, and then waiting another turn, I believe. So I, I'm, there's nothing I'm going to be doing anyway as an attack that isn't uh, yeah. trying to shove. So I think Bregan's going to, again, try to boot. Okay. Okay. And Halifax, what are you going to attempt to do? Halifax, what are you going to attempt to do? Yeah, I'm going to also try to shove her. Boom. Okay. The down double, the hole. double boot. Okay. Um, Alfred and Argus, what are you guys trying to do? I'm going to inspect the staff. Okay. I'm, I'm, I... running, up, I'm running up the stairs with the assumption that there's going to be melee at the top of it. <laughs> <laughs> <Mace>. so, <laughs> Got it. If she goes um, over the edge, yeah. he's going to be like, what the hell? But if... But in the meantime, you're moving up. And I'm going to run up and hit her. Sure. Got it. Well, okay, it's, like, yeah. it's like batter up. Just no. hit her as she yeah. falls. This works. This works. Okay. So... No, yeah. no, hold on, hold on. Brother Gwillem is running to the moss on the wall to get water-breathing moss as... Several handfuls of it in case okay. he has to jump into the water after his buddies Got it. and okay. shove it in their mouth. Okay, so like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I love it. Okay, cool. Yeah, All yeah, right, yeah. so the movement happens first. So Gwillem runs over there, um, runs over to the wall, starts grabbing moss. Argus is running up the stairs at the same time as he sees um, the silhouetted forms in the sunlight of Halifax and um, uh, Bregan attempt to uh, 
uh, kick this beaming figure of light <laughs> over <laughs> over the edge. Um, uh, uh, Alfred, though, Alfred is. Lost. <laughs> yeah, as, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's actually true. Um, as you uh, as you examine the staff, Alfred, you're like, "What? The, the interesting." Um, and then it sort of does a Back to the Future, where it's like it's in your hands and it's just slowly fades out of existence. <laughs> yeah, I expected that. <laughs> slowly, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Halifax. Okay, so then um, there's no missile going on, so it would just be straight up uh, <laughs> melee. So Halifax and Bregan, it's your turn to attempt to kick this guy over, and we'll have Argus respond in kind, depending on what goes on. You want to go first, Sally? Uh, sure. I shall uh, try to shove uh, the she beast down the hole. Mighty her. Oh, that's a twenty. Oh, that's a yes. Nine. Cool. All right. So um, you are. Um, easily able to um hit so uh Bregan's, it doesn't really matter what Bregan does but Bregan, i'm sure lends aid as well as um you were able to push her bodily over the edge um isn't that that scene in 300 where the guy just like straight up like kicks straight ahead yeah yeah, yeah. slow-mo yeah, it's, it's, it's that yeah. One. yeah and she goes hurling back like a ball of light um uh like lucifer morning star as, <laughs> as hurled out hurled out into space and um and uh, Can I she... take a swipe as she goes past? What's that? Can I take a swipe as she goes past? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you, you want to do the swipe? Sure. Why not? A tether, <laughs> a tether ball. Soar it into the water. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna give you. A, I'm gonna give you a penalty though, Argus, because I mean it, it is a fast-moving object that's moving directly past you. So you're gonna take a minus four, but go for it. I rolled a one. <laughs> I think I missed. You throw your sword into the pool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's she amazing. screams. Uh, she's, Sorry, uh, I missed. She screams, but she actually, what's interesting is that there's a moment where it's silent, right? Because she goes, she passes through that 15-foot cone that's like right in the middle of the stairs. So it's like, <laughs> ah, ah. <laughs> um, and she bursts into the water. Uh, so sprites go buzzing up. The water, there's no chance she would land on the sand? Uh, no, not from the lip. Like okay. the, the lip basically goes straight down into the water. Okay. Um, yeah, so she uh, she goes splashing into the water. <gasps> she she comes up, you know, still can't see anything, still glowing. Um, Does it appear as though she was trying to catch air? Yeah, yeah, she comes up first. Like she had to breathe. She okay, had to breathe. That's yeah. great to she that's great to, to know. Yeah. Okay, I know what I'm doing next. For yeah, help. <laughs> splashing around, she has no idea where she is. She's like mum. She's like sure. screaming incoherently, like nothing that even sounds like her sure. voice anymore. Um, uh, at this point, uh, the the form of Marjoram Griver has completely disappeared, and it's replaced by um, a seven foot tall human, v vaguely human like creature. But it basically looks like a seven foot tall of like your typical representation of like aliens right like so right. Like, yeah um strange uh pupilless eyes long sallow face noseless face uh, uh noseless mm -hmm. um and gray skin with the long fingers that are uh deathly sharp um Sorry, splashing around the water my, my prototypical aliens look like something from hr geiger uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right uh, all right sure. okay and that was the end of that round so top of the round spells no spells okay roll for initiative Who's rolling? And who hasn't done it yet? I got a one. I haven't done it. Do it, Mike. Aha. All right. Okay, you guys okay. won. So what she, what she is going to attempt to do um, is... Uh, what is she going to try to do? She has no idea where she is, really. Um, she is going to attempt to swim in a random direction because she, she has no no possible way of knowing like where she is. So I'm just going to roll randomly to see where where she attempts to swim to. Um, that's what she plans to do. I am going to eat one of these herbs, dive in, and try to hold her underwater until she drowns. <laughs> okay. All right. Cool. Rest of you. I'm going to be ready to hit her with my staff if she comes out of the water. Okay. I'm going to retrieve my spear and run back down the staircase. Okay. Fighting the urge to just leap into the water and attack, but do I'm worried. Do it. I got herbs, baby. I got herbs. Okay. <laughs> All right. I will drop my face, pull out my dagger, and I leap into the water to just murder her. Halifax? Um, uh, just because I'm right there, I'd say, uh, ready your bow just in case. And uh, he would start, he'd run down the stairs, but he would, his intention is to block the stairwell. So he'll run 
and just just in case stay somehow at the base. she gets out. Gotcha. Stay right. at the base of the stairs, keep her from escape. Cool. All right. And by the way, you should definitely not do that with your arm. I was just joking. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you can if you David, are totally want... going to die. So Halifax so told Bregan. Al will be hard. <laughs> so you told Halifax told Bregan to pull out her bow. Do you want yeah. Bregan to fire? She, she does. Will, she she will, does have a bead on her. She will definitely fire if she has a bead. Yes. Okay. Cool. All right. Cool. Uh, so you guys get to go first. So um, Argus uh, goes running. Uh, Gar- Argus goes running back down, as does Halifax. So you guys are both at the base of the steps, um, and. Gwillem uh, runs and uh, piles moss into his mouth at the same time, diving into the water. Um, you are, of course, able to breathe in there. And um, uh, why don't you roll me a d6 real quick? You doing it, David? Yeah, it's a three. Three? Okay, you are able to actually um, swim uh, this round and actually meet her this round. Um, uh, she's relatively close to, um, randomly I've decided that she's relatively close to the, to the shore from where you are. Um, and so you dive in and then we have a uh, missile weapon. So Bregan fires down upon her. Okay. That is a terrible roll. Uh, it's a five. Not going to do it. Whew. Arrow goes wide no. splish, into the water. Um, no more melee except for Gwillem, who is actually able to attack. Um, so, Gwillem, you can um, use your strength bonus here if you like, if you've got one. Yeah, the idea is I'm just going to bear hug and sink <laughs> as best I can. Yep. You know? Got it. Oh, come on. Man, I have cursed Oof. rolls tonight. So that's a four total. All right, yeah. So you're you're on her, like you're, you, but you, it, yeah. you, you don't have her in your grasp, but you're like you're sure. you've got hands on her, but she's flailing so wildly that you're not able sure. to actually get any firm hold uh, to drag her down. Um, in the meantime, she is going to roll in a random direction. So that's going to be what's random direction eight. Yeah, yeah, eight yeah. works. Yeah, yeah, that makes okay. sense. Uh, here we go. Clockwise. Wait, does that work? No. You know what? I'm going to re-roll. I'm sorry. I'm going to roll a 12 because then I can do the clock. Makes it easier. Sure. Six. So she's going to go directly south. Which is up onto the shore. Um, right? It is, actually. Yeah. So she makes her way. She disentangles herself from Gwillem um, and makes her way. And she actually is able to claw her way up onto the shore breathing heavily the entire time through through pointed teeth um but she has no idea where she is um she and uh, she just <gasps> flailing out just in just pure distinctive reaction um uh and that is her turn so top of the round spells no spells okay roll for initiative no wait i didn't get to do my action though john what were you gonna do maybe, maybe I can't. like i went to the shore to club her when she went up on shore uh, oh, he did. It did not work that way. But that was on her initiative. Yeah. Yeah, she lost. Yeah, you can go ahead. Yeah, we'll say you. you yeah, she. Okay. <laughs> oh Sweet. yeah, yeah. And that's it. Uh, we should also be like um, uh, announcing die rolls as well, uh, just for the. Uh, oh the, yeah, the really listeners. Did. Yeah, and no, I don't have a strength bonus, nor do I have a bonus to attack. <laughs> so, <laughs> I guess I just roll my hit die, right, John? Is that how it works for wizards? I've never done a melee attack before. Wow, yeah, <laughs> it's the way it works for everybody. Everyone rolls their hit die for weapon damage. Oh, I'll take a point of damage, you fell beast. <laughs> yeah, well, where everyone else failed, Elfric succeeds. <laughs> <Bonk>. <laughs> well, uh, does not seem to knock her unconscious though. Just wings her around once again. She like lashes out blindly at you. Um, so you are engaged with melee with her. Um, top of the round, no more spells. Let's roll for initiative, please. This one's yours, David. All right. Um, and David gets a oh. one. <laughs> okay, what do you guys plan to do? You have to telegraph to me. I mean, I'm going to chase after her. Yeah, I'm running up to her with my spear now. Okay. Or my going to shoot. Alf- oh, Alfred. I'm, I'm, I have to move first. Then I'm going to try and hit her again. But if I can hit her and then move, then what I'm going to do is make way for the big beefy guys to come down and finish her off. Okay. Just in case, to make sure she doesn't get away, I'm I'm guarding the stairs. So if she comes up to the stairs... Okay. 
So you're, you're playing defense, okay. Bregan can shoot Gwillem. However, if she misses, there's a 50% chance if she misses that she hits one of you guys who are in melee with her. He's going to do it. <laughs> Hell yeah, Bregan. <laughs> okay. So uh, you guys move up. Elfric is going to actually going to... Elfric, you're going to have to step away. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to get a, a, a hit off first. Um, okay. So you're going to move back out. Um, yes. And then uh, uh, Bregan's going to fire in. Go ahead, Bregan. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, it's not your turn. She, uh, she won initiative. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, Marjoram won initiative. So okay. uh, you guys were just telling me what she planned to do. So she is uh, obviously going to attempt to break away um, out of um, Alfred's grip this time. A A Alfred's melee. So um, uh, which is not holding on to her. So she can simply do that. She's just going to retreat. But the question is, where does she go? So uh, she can run straight back into the water. We'll see. Two o'clock. All right, she's actually going to be running in the general direction of the eastern corridor, although she doesn't know she's heading in that direction, but that's the direction she's going to. So she's actually going to be... Um, uh, so she moves as fast as she possibly can away from all of you and actually runs headlong into the cavern wall <laughs> on the <laughs> eastern side. Uh, just whack, like right into the wall. Um, we'll see uh. that does a uh, D4. Now we curb stomp her right there. Take another three points of damage from just poof um, as stars go whirling around her head. And she's like, she, I'm going to take another point of AC off of her. So she's actually got an AC of 12 now because she's just like, duh. Um, and uh, now it's your guy's turn to go. So right. um, if you want, this is actually better for Bregan because Bregan can now fire clear without before you guys close with her. Yep. Going to shoot. That is a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Reagan. <laughs> you inspired. She needs a little time. Just, just to review, I've had a five, a three, a one. <laughs> Brutal. Brutal. Um, all right. So okay, man. Her, her quarterly review is not going to be positive. Uh, so, Argus, what are you doing? Well, Willem, what are you doing? You're in the water. I mean, I think Willem is resurfacing and scrambling out of the water. Okay. I mean, I... Yeah, you get out of the water. Get out, get out of the water. water. Yeah, okay. Up. No problem. Right. Argus Boy, rushes in. Argus there. rushes in, attacks, rolls a five. Oof. Halifax ah, is holding holding the, the stairs. Right? Alfred, are you gonna <laughs> save the day you again? just get in here, Halifax, man. This is... Can I get in there down and still do a melee? Or sure, yes, yeah, you can. Because the situation changed. She moved away, so... Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna definitely do that. Have at thee! <laughs> Oh, this is comical. <laughs> <laughs> She's just flailing oh, oh, all over the place. Man, I believe this is a, uh, I keep dropping the ACM. indication of Halifax being the only lethal person in the party. <laughs> yeah. Halifax, I think defense uh, <laughs> might not be an option. Uh, right yeah, I'm going to pass that. Uh, yeah. hat, yeah. Halifax just sighs oh. heavily. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> are, you, are you moving yeah. up? Or are you actually going to hold your place? Uh, no, no, no. I'm I'm uh, going to step up and cut her head off. Okay. Duty calls. Yeah. She runs back down those <laughs> corridors. We're going to have to fight her again later. If I have to tackle her back in the water, I will. Are you... Uh, I'll, I'll do initiative this time. No, no, no. You're, you're, you can attack, so go ahead. Give me an action. Yeah. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah. I, I, shall, I shall do this. Then. We're waiting for your roll. Uh, so step up and... Uh, I think, I, well, I, uh, it's just a plus two. It's an 11. Oh, She's got a 12. <laughs> just missed it. Okay. <sighs> Swing and, and a miss, unfortunately. Okay, so uh, now it's the end of the round. So this is what I'm going to say. If she is able to get down that eastern corridor with a full movement, she's gone. Right, yeah. That's it. Um, likewise. Oh, it, she's glowing, John. She can't hide. I know. Well, I'm just saying it's like it's for the purposes of mechanics, though. It's like then, you know, if you want to do a pursuit, then we switch into pursuit mode. But as far as right. combat goes, it's like she's gone, right? Right, um, right. But she is, she is moving randomly, so. Uh, top of the round, no spells, I assume. So roll for initiative, please. I got two. All right. Go for All it, right. man. I'll do it this time. Oh. Six, baby. Yeah. Cool. She is obviously going to attempt to uh, find escapes in some way, shape, or form. 
I'm going to try to tackle her again because there's nothing else I can really do. <laughs> so just full charge. Tackle her after we've attempted to stab her. We don't actually stab well, her. Well, of course. Alfred, of course. how long does yeah, light yeah, last? Yeah. Mike? What? How long does light last? It's uh, turns, dude. It's like... Oh, uh, turns. Turns? It's, it's like... Never mind then. Okay. All right. Yeah, I want to say it's six turns plus one per level or something like that. All right. It was two hours for the one that... Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. So uh, you guys won. So you're all going to bum rusher. All right. Let me get in there. I'll go first and I'll roll. Do you, do you want Bregan to shoot yes. before you go? Okay. No, I rolled a 19. Nice. Hell yeah. Argus is, Argus is hot for the kill. Six points. Six points. That'll, that'll, that'll do, pig. With the spear? Thank you. <laughs> With the spear? Yeah. Okay, so we'll say for dramatic effect that it looks like she was actually going to randomly actually going to be able to make it down that corridor uh, to the east, the pulsing orange and purple, and you're like, no, I don't think so. And I didn't think so. Yeah. Either. Right in the back, in the base of the spine, just thack. Um, and uh, she screams one last time and then collapses onto the ground at your feet. Um, the last remnants of her uh, Marjoram's robes disappear, um, spilling out what appears to have been a uh, so that kind of that kind of fades away along with the staff and the hat and the robe all sort of disappear. But one thing that is left besides the the naked gray form, long form of this uh, strange creature, um, is a uh, a large pouch. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Which when it when she I, drops I like when she when she drops to the ground jingles yeah. as it hits the ground. I so I have to say, um, I have a limerick. Oh my god. In the midst of combat he's still able to come up with limericks. Combat. <laughs> Deep in the tunnels we found her, a prismist named Marjoram Griver. We lured her away, our intent to betray, but a hideous beast twas hid inside her. Oh, oh my god. You did make go. that up in the middle of combat. <laughs> <laughs> well nice. done, Ted. All right. All right. So to cap off this evening's activities, would you like to take a look at the pouch or would you want to say that yeah. for next time? I should, I should very much like to look in that pouch. Okay. I so, want my staff and magi, damn it. Hal, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, there's no staff inside the pouch. Um, much, <laughs> much to your dismay, Mike. But there is some sweet, sweet loot. There appears to be 100 pieces of gold. Okay. 50 pieces of which you uh, first assume to be silver, but then you look more closely. It's not silver. Uh, is it? Is it? Electrum? Platinum. Is it platinum? Ooh. Platinum, baby. Ooh, the platinum. sweet platinum pieces. 50 pieces of platinum. And well, you almost missed it because it's so tiny, hidden amongst the other coins, is a flawless, small, thumbnail-sized diamond. Wow. Nice. That you can probably estimate would be worth approximately 1,000 gold all on its own. Well, that was incandescent got grottos, everyone. Have a good <laughs> and that was that. All right. All right. Good job, guys. Yes, you indeed did, of course, face a doppelganger of Marjoram Griver. So um, wow. I, I assume that you guys had figured that out well in advance, but that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. That was very fun. Yeah. I'm, I'm worried about what happened to dear old uh, Marjoram the first. <laughs> Mm. We, just gotta bring back we, shall, we shall find out. Indeed. Guys, well, there, there were two I'm little statues of her. I'm not. I'm not. Um, I'm not kidding about bringing her head. Yeah, no, it's a good idea. A glow. Yeah. Well, it also proves that maybe the accusations are uh, about the doppelganger and not Martrum, right? It's uh, possible. That, what everyone looks very confused right now. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying for you. Yeah. <laughs> doppelganger is probably useful. It's something to think about. It's something to think about. Yeah. I mean, like we, we, uh, Marjorie might be a, a sweet old lady. You know what I mean? And all of these like, uh, terrible, uh, things. Yeah, she's still a rogue prismist though. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a rogue wizard in our party though. You do. do not. I am sanctioned by the church. So a turn went by for that combat, of course. Yeah. Um, and the um, next turn you will have to rest or take penalty. But yep. we'll figure that yep. out next time. I think we go up and make lunch and then go back down in. But we'll find that out yep. next time we play. You are in the interest chamber, yep. All right, guys. So once again, that was an awesome time. Uh, thank you, everyone, for tuning in and, and uh, watching and or listening. Uh, and we will see you guys next time. Don't forget, of course, to do the, the thingy thing with the down below thingy thing. But liking and subscribing, hitting the bell notification and all that sort of jazz. And uh, keep an eye out in the near future for an exciting announcement for the channel. we got some exciting stuff planned for you in the near future. So keep an eye out for that. 
Um, and in the meantime, we will see all of you guys next time. Have a great week. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you, John.